Join jury maker and specialist guest designer Debbie Bulford for a fun and relaxing day discovering the addictive appeal of chain mail. This workshop is ideal for beginners and will introduce the fundamentals of this art form. You will be guided through a range of beginner's weaves and learn how to create your own Byzantine bracelet and earring set. The full course includes a pack of 200 jump rings, a toggle clasp, a pair of shepherd hook earrings, the chainmail tutorial DVD, use of all relevant tools, a buffet style lunch and refreshments, a tour of the studio and a chance to meet the presenters, and take a visit to our gem museum. All this for just $74.95. For more information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Jewelry Maker, bringing out the designer in you. A step cut gemstone has rectangular facets which are neatly arranged on top of one another. Now these can go across the pavilion and also up across the table of a gemstone. This particular cut was developed to ensure brittle gemstones such as your emeralds would have their corners and facet edges protected. We often see mixed cuts as well. Now these include a step cut pavilion with a round brilliant top to ensure while the gemstone is protected underneath it's still making the most of the light dispersion on top. Yes, we're back, the Kershaw and I, we have missed you so much. How are you, how are you? Today I am joined on this wonderful Thursday, this Designer Inspiration Thursday, by the wonderful, inspirational designer, Deborah Kershaw. Oh, that's very nice. I thought I'd make you a bit posher Thank than you, usual. Thank you, I'm a bit scared like now. <laughs> Deborah Cashew. <laughs> like sounds a little bit like cashew nut, doesn't it? When posh people say cashew instead of cashew. I can be Deborah Cashew if you want. I would like you to be that, Deborah Cashew. It makes you sound like Jar Jar Gabor. Ooh, yes. I like that. Well, I like you. <laughs> uh, what have you got for us today, Deborah Cashew? I've got lots of metal texture. So doing something a bit different with your metal stamps. So. <gasps> Yes. We all love a bit of Kershaw, followed by <laughs> Tarry. It's like the perfect jewellery maker meal, isn't it? <laughs> Who's for pudding? That's what I want to know. Uh, now, oh, me poppies. I have got a poppy. Is it Mark Smith for pudding, I think, apparently? That sounds good. Now, we uh, thank the, l the luscious lady Tarry and the wonderful Carol. You're going now, are you, darling? Uh, were you all right? Now, the other day, last time I saw her, she gave me a chocolate bath for my journey home. Sorry. Come in, come in, my darling. Make yourself, there we go, we're poppy exchanging. Poppy. Thank you. Poppy exchange is going on now. We must all wear our poppies. We must. We, we must all... I went, to guess what happened to me on my day off the other day? I went to London with the boy and the boy's friends. We went to the Science Museum. Then I said, let's go to Covent Garden and just sit down and have dinner there. And Joss Stone started singing at us and it was to do with, obviously, Poppy Day. Oh, brilliant. 
She knew I was coming. She was like, oh, huh, huh. <laughs> that's what she sang. <laughs> Are you digging on me? I was like, yes, I am. Did you do the tower? Did we do the tower? No, we wanted to see the poppies, but it was so busy. But uh, that's another story. Now, uh, Debbie Kershaw or Debbie Kershaw? Debbie Sorry, my ear, I'm not used to this. See, my ears got all used to relaxing and not having an earpiece in it. It's just been like hanging out and then won't hold it in. <laughs> Come on here, conform. Now, um, Debbie, you... Now, I'm not starting any rumours about anything. Oh, no. This is what happened. She went to Ireland, she broke her leg. I'm not saying there, uh, there was some drink involved. I'm not saying that these <laughs> events happened at the same time. I'm just saying as I feel it happened. Uh, but you've got another story, De Deborah. What happened to you? Oh, I wish I had gone to Ireland and broken my leg and it was a big glamorous story, but I was actually coming down the stairs. It's really embarrassing. But you did go to Ireland and you did get drunk. Is that part of the story is true? That part of the story is true. Um, I was coming down the stairs and my cat um, came across me and I went to avoid her and I fell down the stairs and sprained my ankle quite badly. But it's an old injury. I've got a weakness there anyway. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. That's my story. I'm sticking it to me, <laughs> Lord. Now, we ask you, therefore, as your text message subject of the day, have you broken in a strange situation? Give us a text in. 60777, I believe, is the number to be texting. What have you broken? And it doesn't have to be a limb or a bone. It could be... I broke my heart in San Francisco because somebody stamped on it. Or it could be, I broke my guitar because of this, or whatever. You broke your keyboard last week, Ben. How did you do it in an interesting way? Because we only want interesting stories. I was doing a live radio session because he's all rock and roll now. He has to bring out the rock and roll story. In an abandoned building in a tower. Ding, ding, ding. It's like spinal tap all over again. Now, I am going to give you so much gorgeousness today, but we're going to start with a little merry gift. What is a mystery gift? Oh, hang on, it's a lucky dip. Hang on, I've got to sort my ear out, sorry. Right, just say this to me, Liam, producer. Is it a lucky dip? So I don't know what it is then, do I? Oh, OK, it's an assorted findings lucky dip. Information I could have done with at the start. <laughs> now... <laughs> He's such a boy, isn't he? He's just, just like my son, just like my son, only older. Now, well, what, what this will be now, Liam, what you've got to think about is this is assorted, which means you could get lots of different bits and pieces when it comes to your findings. So you're going to get a big bag of rose gold. It's always going to be rose gold, but they are going to be uh, different. Now, the thing we always promise with Lucky Dips is that you will get better value for money. You will get more than you will normally pay for. Please remember that you always get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So this could be a really good risk, except it's not really a risk, is it? Because any risks that you take come with a... Of course, it's not till... It's till 31st of January. It's extra. I did a little tap dance at my own excitement there um, now it's extra this money back guarantee because it's until the 31st of January next year let's have a look at what your findings bag may or may not have it's mystery you see have you told everyone to download your new album there Ben if you could please download find it in your way to uh, download sorry Ben hang on a minute love there was sorting myself out was talking about your band, Byron Hair, B Y R O N. Uh, can I just say, um, can I just say that all my son's friends are now singing your song, but not today in the playground? Yes, uh, yes, they are. I promise you, because he told everyone that he knew you. Yeah, and they're all singing it now, and they've listened to it on Xbox Live. Other live systems are available. Uh, D M A Z forty one. Nine year old boys like it, so you should too. It's a wonderful Byron Hare. What is it called? Nineteen sixty eight or something. Oh, Sleep on the Fire is the album. Please go and download it for our Ben. Now, you will get loads and loads and loads of your free fi your findings, your rose gold findings, but you are going to get maybe one or two thrown in there for free. Now I'm going to give you the price tag of a normal findings kit. 
and I'm going to find some tape for my ear. That's what I'm going to do. Cass, can you tape my ear together? Uh, DMAZ of 41. Now, you normally get 118 pieces, but it could be that you get more. It could be that you get more. Now that you... You could get this. You could get more. You should usually get the chain. You sh you'll, usually, you'll get different variations. D the one thing is for absolute certain you're going to get very good value for money when you grab this. There's two ways in which you can come and order with us. One is on the phone, 0800 644 655. Or you can, of course, uh, shop with us today online, all the w's.jurymaker.com. I want all your gossip because I've been away so long. I need all your gossip because I've missed you so much. Missed the store. It's felt a bit lonely at times. Now, it is lonely. Well, you realise then how few friends you've actually got because you speak to work people all the time, uh, who now I'm thinking are my friends. Uh, you can use your debit card or your credit card to shop with us and you do have that extended money back guarantee. So you've got here, I'm showing you the metre of chain. Your chain might be different to this. You usually will get a metre of chain. Uh, it could be the ovals or the Rolo links. It could be a curb chain. You know what, you're gonna get... Do you want know to like it? I do. It'll, there'll always be rose gold as well. I, I get a bit of a buzz out of, out of not knowing something. I, I'm excited to get it, aren't you? And you know, you've always got that 30 day money back guarantee. I don't think anyone will be disappointed with this, do you? I have got a jewelry maker from Gloucestershire. They're always smart. Uh, Sylvia, you got yours. Richard from Dorset's got two. Linda from Kentucky. I won't do the accents for you all. Now have a look at that. Normally, aren't our findings 12.50? Aren't you getting better value at 9.95? And you know what? We don't want to be kept short. Sometimes they're more expensive than that, aren't they? You don't want to be. You don't ever want to be without findings because if you get that idea in your head, and you want to make, you've got to make, you need to make, and you can't because you haven't got the right findings. And then that idea goes, and you get a little bit cross with yourself. 9.95, wonderful price tag. DMA Z41. Jane, you've got yours. Hello, Zena, Helen, Louise, all my old mates are back. Chrissy, Louise, Kath, Diane, Alison, Beth. I have got Janet and Sylvia in Cambridgeshire. I went to Cambridgeshire the other day, I did. And I went on one of them boats, what's it called? Punt. That's what I did. 995 is that number to be called in. Don't forget to text us. What have you broken? Or just if you want to text us, say hi. We quite like that, Debbie Kershaw and I. Oh, that was rhyming. I'm more talented than I first realised. Uh, so let's have a look at the first text of the day, shall we? We got a text yet? Good. Hello, Sazzy. Broke my cheekbone and my eyes again. Ah! My horse tripped went down on her knees and then did a forward roll with me still on <gasps> oh that hurts that hurts oh i hope you're all right how did you get how did you get back or were you in the school that's always the thing if you're out on a hack the other day my daughter went out on a hack um and her friend lost her phone so mia said i'll ring it and we'll try and find it around this field someone answered it and it was a cyclist in front of them hello she's like oh i think you've got my phone Anyway, 9.95, DMA, Z41, plenty more interesting tales where that come from. Loads of, loads of these are still available, so if you want them, Fiona, uh, Fiona is blessing us and we're blessing her straight back. Now, I've, I've now pushed you so far down here that you're just muffled, so if you can say it really quietly, that's better, yeah. What did you say? Okay, I've got them. You didn't have to do a girl voice, but I liked it. I said softer, didn't I? Oh, yeah, so... Pro <laughs> oh, they're funny today, them little rascals. Now, I've got these beautiful moonstone drops for you. Have a look. Have a look at these. Oh, God, all my hair on me. No, oh, I'm a right old state today, and I? I've forgotten how to be professional. I must stop this. Now, I've, not, I've literally not put makeup on for 10 days. Or like a little bit sometimes, but like out of defiance. I'm like, I'm not putting make you on my face makeup. Now, beautiful drops here, and they are of Moonstone, which is one of my favorites is my son's birthstone. Birth gemstone in June, and it's got loads of wonderful myths and legends. But mainly, the reason we love this, not, I mean, I do love things because they're birth gems, they make them a little bit more special, don't they? But the main reason that I love Moonstone is because it's so blinking beautiful, Debbie Kershaw, isn't it? It's definitely my, one of my top three Moonstone. You never know Ooh. what you're going to get when you look at it, do you? And it's always pretty, it's always beautiful, mm. it's always... I, I, I love it because it's soft and... 
I, I can't even, you know that shiller when you get it, you just think, you just go, oh. Mm. It's magical. You know? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It is magical. But then I'm a, I'm a bit of an old hippie. I think Me too. gemstones are a bit magic, do you? Not pushing that on anyone, of course. Now, I think I might have your other favourite. If you're out thinking, oh, I love a bit of moonstone. Maybe amethyst is your favourite. So many of you call us in and say, amethyst, amethyst and labradorite, I think, and moonstone people say they're favourite yeah. gemstones. Well, I'm going to give to you, look at these drops as well. And these are really nice, they're graduated. So they make a lovely Kumahimo piece. Doing a bit of beaded Kumahimo. I love the graduation, so you can see that. And then just working down to those bigger, chunkier ones. So these would make a wonderful pair of graduated earrings, I think. But, you know, like I just said, beaded Kumahimo would be awesome with this. Really pretty in a charm bracelet as well. So you've got these two. And look at how well they go together. They're just so beautiful together. If I give them a twist, I do love the peaches together with those purples, do you? Then I'm gonna give you, what, now this might be one of your favorites as well. This is definitely. Definitely a bundle of chatoyancy. I said that a little bit like Julian Clary. I just <laughs> must have borrowed his voice for a minute. Chatoyancy. Now, <laughs> I just came out like that and I thought, who said that? Oh, it was me. Uh, now, I bet that was me a lot. Have a look at this toy gazoi, that's what they call it around here. And I love the depth of colour. And, and the thing is, in the sort of 80s, the beginning of the 80s, tigers were so popular, but it was one that were, was for the men as well as the women. And, y you know, it, it was one of those putting signet rings and things like that. It, because it's got such a, a wonderful mystery about it, it's so different. And to me, it goes very well with all different kinds of gold, doesn't it? Yeah, tiger's eye is gorgeous, but also with silver. I've got a bracelet with a big tiger's eye with silver on, and it's really nice. It's, it makes, if you want something that goes with a lot of things, and you don't want the black, and you don't want the white or clear gemstones, that's quite a good alternative, I think. You're, yeah, you're right. Because you can go really gold and warm, but you can also put the silver with it as well. So and it'll keep it sort of all seasons, then, yeah. I guess, won't it? Hmm. I'm just thinking of the two Cologne pieces that we used to do in, on Gems TV. Uh, no, no, that I used to do, they still do. Yeah. And a lot of those are in silver with tiger's eye. And actually, I really love those. When you put a lot of silver with it, it's quite chunky. Yes, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it looks really lovely. So you've got a gorgeous trio here. And you've got lots and lots of scope for design as well from those gorgeous cascading earrings. You've got charm bracelet. I mean, they're just oozing out, aren't they? OSG, see? 83 festive treats. I guess these could be festive treats. I guess you could make, absolutely, you could make Christmas presents out of these. Ben's allergic to me. He's been doing night but sneezing. <laughs> Melody of Hampshire, you've got yours. You swallowed a fly, perhaps you'll die. Uh, jewelry maker of the city of Bristol, Joanne, you've got yours. Avril, Maureen, Haley, and Essex. Seven, no, seven ninety-five for our tree. You'll not be doing that really, will you? <laughs> the eye is 795 0800 Unbelievable value. Now, you've got to remember here that I am talking to you about genuine, blooming, gorgeous, genuine gems. This is a real amethyst, real moonstone, real tiger's eye. Of course, amethyst, if I didn't mention, it's February's birth gemstone as well. This is such a great deal. Think about this. Are you selling your jewellery? Could you make a great profit by buying three genuine gemstone strands for seven ninety five? Couldn't you sell a pair of earrings for that price tag just using a couple of these gemstones? Or wouldn't you have most of them left? And haven't you got an extended money back guarantee? Isn't it a great day to shop with us? Please don't forget to send us a text message. I've missed you, I have. Uh, Tina, you've got yours. Mary and Jan and Gillian and Jennifer, uh, you have got yours. I went South End on Sea for the first time the other day and all. Did you? I've done a lot of first time things. Well, I've never been there. My mum had been there and went, oh, it's not that great. And then we went there and she went, they spruced it up. It was mm. good. I liked it. Mm. I haven't been for years, but we used to go a lot when I lived in London because it Did wasn't you? far. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, it's the beach was cute. They still got nice. the pier. They got a really long pier. Really it's long. the old longest pier in the world. You can get a little train down. They got the train. Yeah, it's so that. cool. I got that. And the boy ran from one end of the pier to the to the end, and I sat on the train like this. <laughs> we had walkie talkies. Yeah. Hello. I'm going to tell you a story about a walkie talkie situation in London that I had. I could have been arrested, but I wasn't, thankfully. Seven ninety-five. The best thing not to do is give your friend one. Have had a glass of wine, get on the tube, and go. Suspect twelve o'clock blonde hair, because they don't like that. Seven. I was pretending I was on twenty-four. The rest of the train did not like it. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. It was nothing bad. Uh, 0806 6455, seven pounds and ninety-five pence. For the three, incredible, incredible. Uh, Ben's girlfriend accidentally bought a stolen car. 
Ah, oh, what happens? Do you, you just get, that's it. That's awful, Ben. It's a situation of the law now. OSG C83. This is a situation of incredible value, though, by the way. Incredible value. Mike is here. Now, Mikey, for the first time, uh, Mikey, we, this isn't our shift side. We're not used to these people. No. We're not used to you, we are. We're not used to these people. If it wasn't for that pesky vulture, you'd have been on my shift side, Ben. In case, in case we are, uh, we're just out him. He's coming back. He couldn't stand his other job. He wanted to come back. He lasted four hours. <laughs> Seven ninety-five. Uh, now, Mikey and Ben are not happy because they've missed out on a promotion because of him. So everybody is now. It's a, it's a political situation, is what's going on here at Jewelry Maker, everybody. But we love the vulture. We welcome him back. Yeah, it's, all right. it's not all right, Mikey. You're hurt. You're just too nice to I'm, tell him. I'm wounded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, if to you, what should we do now? Can we do this? Because I love these. I'm a, I'm a bit massively obsessed with it. If you can be a bit massively obsessed with anything. Now, I've got to show you this. You have to have this. I remember giving you the Peridot on its own. Do you love to set your own gemstones? <gasps> it's the prong setting DVD. Has that launched since I've been away? Michelle Naylor's prong setting DVD. I don't think it's out yet, but it is about to any day launch. It's going to launch any day. Now, these are what I call jeweler's gems. So they don't come on a strand, they're individual, they're boxed, they're beautiful, they're absolutely beautiful. And I've got to say, if you want an opportunity to set a gemstone in a professional way, you have to get this set because we don't have many like this. They come beautifully boxed, beautifully displayed. I'm going to show you, just, just have a look, I'm going to show you what you've got. A beautiful blue topaz. The eight millimeter. You've got to see this moonstone. You've got to see this moonstone. You've got to see it. Let me see if I got. Where's my little? I've got my grabber. Don't you worry about that. I've always got my grabber. Just trying to. I'm just trying to. Hang on. Can you open this for me, please, darling? Darling heart. Thank you. It was Pete, yeah. Peter, call him by his actual name, please. Unless he tells you otherwise. Peter, could you open the box for me, please, love? Could you open it? Thank you. Now, they're all eight millimetre rounds. I'm going to want to open all of them, Peter, to be honest. You can't get the staff. This don't happen on our shift side, does it, Mikey? Don't happen. They're all open. You fail. <laughs> oh, I've got other gossip for you. Lord Murley, who used to work here, filmed a horror film at my house. Were you in it? I was the mother, which I was slightly inside. The mother? <laughs> the mother of this 20-year-old child? <laughs> Fine, I'll do it. They were like, yeah, you'd make a great mother. I was like, I am. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit insulted. <laughs> Yeah, it, I could. I was old enough to be a mother. It was fine. Thank you, my darling, 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 darling. Right. I am going to show you. I'm just going to put this up. Right, I've got... I'm going to show you first. I need you to open all the boxes now. Look at this. I just thought this can't be an opal because... So I thought it must be a moonstone. It can't be an opal because I know the price of this. You're not, you're going to be, you're going to literally go crazy. Debbie, Debbie, Deborah, mm -hmm. you're going to oh. be, a, you're going to be very gel. A wellow opal. Oh, look at that. Look at it. Look at the colour. Look, can you see that? Wow. Oh, I'm so in love with these. I'm so in love with them. I imagine that on a tiara, vintage tiara with an opal. A gemstone which they say is lucky. I've got to show you this topaz as well. Now, please get on the phone very, very quickly. It's a price tag. I mean, if I showed you all of this and we were in a jeweler's or a shop or you were going somewhere, like you were at the jewellery quarter, you'd expect to pay well over £100 for everything. I'm the quality is superb. The colours are incredible. I can't take these out of the box, so I'm going to just show you individually. Look at this Swiss blue topaz. <gasps> that, for me, is dive -inable. 
I love blue topaz. I, and you can't get that blue. You can't get that blue in a simulated gemstone. It just doesn't happen. Look at the depth of colour. Look at the fluidity of colour. It's just be, it looks like a, a tropical sea, doesn't it? Look at that. Couldn't you just be diving off a, off a boat to do a bit of snorkeling? It's just gorgeous. Have a look at the Hunan Peridot, my favourite type of Peridot. This is in for this white quartz. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. You've got a smoky quartz. Now, you can see that quality, you can see that depth in that smoky quartz. This really is an outstanding collection. I'm a big, 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 big fan of these individual gemstones. I want to feel like a jeweller when I've got these gemstones. If you do crystal healing and things, you want to feel the gemstone. You want to mm. see it, you want to feel it in your hand. You want, if you want to prong set things, you want the quality. You don't want the drill hole there if you are in uh, setting things into silver, clay and things. When you haven't got the drill hole, you feel like, right, okay, I'm ready to take that step. I am ready to take the step to being more of a jeweller, Debbie, would you agree? Yeah. And when you work it, I mean, the facets on those alone, they just stand apart, don't they? The yeah. way they shine, they let the light in, they're gorgeous. Are they all coming together? Are they all They all life? come together and you're not going to believe the price. Like, now, if you were in the jewellery quarter and you had all these gorgeous gemstones, right, and you had the quality, you had that flawless quality, because to the naked eye, I'm telling you, these, these have got the most incredible quality. They are, have clarity supreme. They, you would expect to pay over £100, oh, wouldn't yeah. you? Easy, yeah. Now they come individually packaged. You can get your certificate of authenticity for all of them. You've got a leaflet, the box, the display box. This really and truly is a collector's item. It is for you if you are looking to take your jewellery making that little bit more seriously. If you are looking to create something that looks so professional, then you need to use the tools, the gemstones that appear professional. In the same way that jewellers use gemstones, you can now at the should be price tag own now this is this isn't even the finished price tag it's insane i would pay that for the opal it's a wello opal it has the most amazing clarity to it real fluidity and the golden tone that's flowing into this wonderful opal is absolutely it's like heaven it, it's wonderful it makes you take a breath you're not going to believe the value that you're getting it's already outstanding no, this, this is not going to happen every day, so please get them now. <laughs> I, I would pay that for these individually. I would pay that for the individual opal. I would pay that for this gorgeous stuff. I love that topaz. I love this pair. I love this all. £24.95. I can't work out which one is my favourite. I just can't. It would be out of these three, maybe. And these three, uh, uh, do you know what? I can't, oh, I can't, you've just got to have it. You've got to have these. They are wonderful. If you consider that you would like to start making that, now listen, we're very busy for this, and there is a queue on the phone lines. I've got Richard, I've got uh, Switha, I've got Rosalind, I've got Maggie, Tina, Diane, Rosemary, Anonymous in Norfolk, Elizabetta, uh, I have got a jewelry maker in Greater Manchester, I've got Patricia, jewelry maker in Merseyside, jewelry maker in Cornwall, buying two of these. Could that be our very own and gorgeous Rachel Norris? Only time will tell. Julie, you've got yours. Melody, Haley, Mary and Jan. Pauline, you've got yours as well. Make sure you're checking out baskets because we don't have loads of these. We just don't. 24 95 Surely to goodness. This is one of those once in a lifetimes, isn't it? So that's under a fiver for each. Do you get all five? You get all five. All five of them. Bad. You know what I'd like to do is. is I want to know. Yes. Well, I'd like to give one of those as a present and tell the. You know, maybe it's their birthstone and say, right, you tell me what you want me to make you with this, and I'll make. So you're giving. Really, you're giving a stone, but you're also giving your creativity as a gift as well. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I just thought of it. That would be put lovely. It a, put it in the thought bank. I love that. You know, it's for a special friend or your, yes. your mum or, you know, that would be, it's a bit different, isn't it? You know when you run out of ideas for people often? And it's so, yeah, because you know what, it could be that they've got loads of earrings, but they really wanted a pen. Well, they love jewellery. Like, I've got loads of jewellery. It doesn't mean I don't want it anymore, but it'd be great if someone asked me exactly what I wanted. Yes. I love the idea of these being in a single prong set pendant. It'd be gorgeous. I love that, but I also love the idea of getting two and making stud earrings. Or three, so I've got the pendant and the earrings. Girls don't, we don't want much, do we? Twenty-four ninety-five. please multiply if you can. Oh, is it sold out? Oh, it's what, darling? Everyone checks out, it's gone. Lindsay's got two, you see, and so has Yolandi. And Kathleen's got two now as well. 
You've got to check out your basket quick, quick, quick. Who's got gossip for me? What's our Lucy been up to then? Anyone got any gas? It's been happening. Don't know, I haven't been there. Saturn, were you, Mikey? Any gas? Any girlfriends on the. <laughs> Not right now, is it? It, well, he is available, but then he goes out with girls and then he always finds faults with them. <laughs> That's your problem. No, you're a very lovely person, but you're not a committed kind of person, yeah, are you? Yeah, trouble with commitment. You've got commitment. Yeah. What's That's your problem, Liam. Yours is what? Too deep to investigate? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, too deep to go into. Ben just loves women. But only the woman you're with, Ben, yes? Yes, of course. Now, which one are we going to go to? Oh, 18. Because number one would be far too normal. Now, we all love the Featherlight head pins. I'm a little bit obsessed with Featherlight head pins because they're great with pearls. They're great when you don't want them to be seen, but they are amazing for the little bubble style rings when you don't want really thick findings. Uh, charm bracelets as well, bubble bracelets, these are great for. But Debbie Kershaw, you are far more qualified to tell me why I need the feather light head pins. Really long ones, these are. You just need them because if you want to stick to your kit, or you don't want to use your wire up um, or maybe you know you haven't ventured into wire work yet and you haven't got a lot of wire these are perfect they go through anything they go through your little diddy stones they go through your pearls in my demo in a minute I'm going to show you how to use one of those to sort of Ooh. set something in metal oh, fab. Uh, rather than wire and I think that because they're so versatile and they're so pretty and you can sort of stack them together and put sort of your, your more um, tiny gemstones on there yeah. and not worry. So basically anything will go on there. So that's really, really handy. I like the different colour golds as well. I mean, I love, the, I love them together too. Yes, yeah, so I do. Look I. great together on a bubble bracelet. Uh, now you can put the tiny ones, but are they? Are they thick enough? Are they strong enough to accommodate the larger gemstones, Debbie Kershaw? I haven't used them for the larger gemstones, but you know what you could do? You could put two or three through a large gemstone and sort of fan out the bottom to get a different effect, couldn't Ooh. you? So then you're actually, you know, giving it the structure, but you're also getting sort of the pretty, the pretty look of the, the bottom of the pin as well. So always, I mean, with bigger gemstones, you usually have bigger holes, don't they? So you could put a few through there and then twirl the ends and be really artistic. I love that. It gives you, you, so you can experiment with yeah. them. Now I've got some new findings which are so lush, and we had to sneak these past Dion. Ooh. Now you could use these really skinny head pins to actually weave in and out with some gems don't you love these don't you just i need them i love them i want these as earrings now these are going to be perfect if you're weaving in and out aren't they? absolutely perfect but you know any little um space that you need to get your pin through which maybe your usual pin wouldn't go through that's what these are just perfect for and they've actually got a pretty little ball end as well so that will often just hold in and stay inside your gemstones so you've got a little bit of metal showing but maybe you don't want a lot of metal showing you don't want a big star or a petal or whatever hanging off you just want it to be more understated these are perfect for that so they offer simplicity yeah. and subtlety to jewellery, which is great when you're thinking about using these with pearls because they will go through the drill hole of any pearl, which is wonderful because you know sometimes you, you just can't get a regular head pin through there. These will be wonderful for pearls, and no matter what size. We're going to give you 200 of the gold ones, of the regular gold colour. Uh, I went gold then, didn't I? I'm turning, and I? I've got all half in here. <laughs> Hertfordshire. Uh, then I'm going to give you a hundred of the rose gold, gold ones. Oh, I like the uh, code for these. P R G C twenty three. The notorious P I G C twenty three. Eight hundred six triple four six double five. Or the com. Esther Carroll, Aileen Hayes. Oh, there's loads of you. Oh, so many multi buyers as well. Oh, six ninety-five, definitely a treat price tag. It's a pocket money price tag now, isn't it? Uh, six pounds ninety-five pence. Pocket money. Yeah, I've started giving my kids pocket money. Don't last. It don't last long. I tell you. I tell you. Did you go out for bonfire night last night? Let me hear about it. I went to the Blue Hearts Hockey Club. It was wonderful. We went to the golf club. Was it wonderful? Really lovely, yeah. It, was, it wasn't too crowded and it was all family, so you didn't get oh, sort of, lovely. yeah, any rowdiness, you know, which you don't want when you take your little ones, do you? And it was just, no. it was really nice. It was lovely. I love it. It's so magical when it just goes boom. Yeah. And, these, and I was like, oh, I love it. It makes you feel hopeful. It's lovely. It? Yeah. yeah. It is magical. I yeah, like it. I do. Yeah. 
That and gunpowder, obviously. Magic <laughs> and gunpowder is what go in them. Six pounds and ninety-five pence. God bless Guy, guy Fawkes for allowing us to have bonfire night. Uh, PIGC23 is your item code. Uh, Carol's got two, because that's the way she's rolling today. I've lost all the rest of me multipliers, but I know there's loads of you there. Claire's got two. Uh, I have got uh, Richard from Dorset with two. Jill's got two. Yolandi, you're there as well. Great to see you. Uh, I've got Cassie, Mary in County Lau, you've got two. Denise, let's have another message. Now, our question to you was, what have you broken in a funny old situation? Sersi uh, sounded quite, ooh, didn't it? These might make you feel better, like, there are worse things. Look at this. Look at this. I bent down to kiss my daughter in the playground. She turned around too quickly and headbutted my nose and broke it. This was four weeks after I'd had sinus oh, surgery. No. <gasps> I didn't know whether to cry, scream or faint. I'd have been sick. That's what I do when I'm in extreme pain. I just throw up. Do you do? Did, what did you do? My, mine have done that to me and I've had a black eye before. It hasn't broken my nose, but kids tend to do that, don't they? You bend down to them and they move. That must have really, really hurt. Oh, crikey. Yeah, I'm, everyone's yeah. going. Oh, it's not good. Oh. Kids have got such hard heads. Really as well. hard heads. What? Why is this <laughs> head so hard? I, mean, I think they're not cautious when they like throw themselves no. around. They don't care. Whereas we're a little bit like that hurts. I know yeah. from past experiences. Kids don't care, do they? They're like <laughs> darn things. <laughs> I had Mia and Max in my bed on Halloween night. Did you? Never slept a wink. The boy punches, the girl talks in her sleep, like that. I am not moving because I can't be bothered, but I'm really annoyed. Were they scared? Huh? Were they scared? Well, yeah, that Mia watched a horror film. Oh, you know. <sighs> anyway, it's designer inspiration time. Oh, you don't do that little doodah. Oh, that's why Fulcher's has got to come back. Yes, yeah, designer inspiration. Normally Fulcher would be like, yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't like twice broadcasting some money. Okay, fine. <laughs> he really hates Tom today. Now, you're watching Fulcher. <laughs> ben, I did send him a message, a funny one, which he took quite seriously. Now, I'm going to give you a gorgeous kit, but the thing about this kit is the wonderful, wonderful blanks that you're getting in it. Now, today we get three kits because Pip gave us a treat, so which is grand, isn't it? Now, I'm going to give to you the stars I love these. I love that. This, this is such a great Christmas gift creator, this kit. If you want something that's just going to create gorgeous, personalised things, then you need this kit. Uh, now, I'm a big fan of personalised gifts, and I think these would be nice hanging on the tree. These would be nice if you're doing personalised crackers and you pull the cracker and you're going to put a nice gift in them. These are going to be great if you want to make cards, Christmas cards, that come, the yeah. type that come out every year and you want to put a special message on them. Maybe, you know, I love to give my kids things with their names on them at Christmas that yeah. come out every year. You know, we could have Mia and Max on one and they could hang on the tree every year yeah. or, or whatever. I just think it's so nice. And if you're doing maybe a bit of a nativity scene, these stars are going to come in handy as well. Have a look. You get, I think, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stars which I love. I love these blanks. Now you can drill hole them with our little drill hole maker, um, which, which is on our website. I'm not sure if they're in stock at the moment. I'll get somebody to check. Liam, could you just check? We've got some in bundles soon, do you think? Look, he's gonna have a look. He's not giving me any definite answer there. <laughs> now, we're also going to give you the moons, but these moons work really well in other ways as well. Firstly, they could be the sign of Taurus. Couldn't they? Mm -hmm. Like that? Uh, now, they, they're obviously moons, but they could be, you could put a hole here and a hole here, and they could be gorgeous pendants with a name on them. Yeah. I mean, there's lots you can do, turn them all around. We're going to see what Debbie's done with them in a bit, and you're going to fall in love with it. Now, now you know what? You're going to want jump rings, so we're going to give you 100 jump rings in that wonderful anodized aluminium. Now, these have been saw cut, and they're nine millimeter saw cut jump rings. Then we're going to give to you sterling silver. Sterling silver. Now you get, oh, this isn't the sterling silver that I've got. I've got a sterling silver bag as well. Did you get this sterling silver bag with this or did you get the bigger? No, I right, didn't so get I'm not sure if this silver. comes with it or not. 
Oh, hang on, it's the extra bits. What am I talking? Just look like sterling silver. It's all the extra bits. Ignore me, I'm a fool. So you've got the silver on copper, e-coated. You've got the normal ball head pins, but you've got the teardrops, and I love these. Now, these are great if you want to put a little bit of enamel or resin or, or something yeah. on them as well, by the way. Uh, you get your earring findings. You've got your... Uh, jump rings which have got detail on them so they could be little spaces you've got lot you've got those lovely long gearing findings on there as well you get 118 now that's quite enough for me but that's not where it all ends I've got to say this is a very mammadial collection mm. I love the colors that you're about to see firstly I'm gonna give you the ball chain you get a meter of it I love that I love that. It's brilliant if you're making masculine jewellery as well because men don't mind wearing something that looks like this. You know, the, I think this is the perfect unisex chain because it's not super, super delicate. If, you, if you're no. a lady that likes wearing maybe a chunky pieces or just a little bit of detail, but it is very feminine at the same time. But I think this is the same chain that um, you'd see dog tags yeah. on. So I think this can be quite masculine as well. Now, look at these. Gorgeous Keshi pearls. I absolutely love the peacockery of these. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Don't you think it just feels like he's fanned out his feathers and displaying everywhere? Look at those wonderful colours. Make the noise of a peacock, Mikey, to authenticate my statement. I don't know if that's that was more like an emu. Just work what, on what that. Noise do they make then? When... Yes, they go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, that's true. Mike has not been to very many posh places, you see. <laughs> Have a look. <laughs> the perfect complement to these peacock keshi pearls. Well, of course, it's that Labrador essence. I feel like a mermaid has leapt out of the water and kissed me on the lips. Look at that. Look at it. It's perfect. It's magical. Isn't it magical? It's gorgeous, yeah. It feels like we're enchanted. This kit should be called Enchanted. I love it. I love this cup. Pip's done a good job. And I'm the first one to criticise Pip when he doesn't, so I should be the first one to praise him when he does. Look at these as well. These pearls are an incredible colour. Now, they've got a depth to them, but the pearlescence is almost quite gunmetally. Mm. Well, I think they're adorable. Not purple, not blue, somewhere amazingly in between. These are, aren't they? Go I love this combination. They're beautiful. They're silky. They're dark. They're candlelight and velvet. And yeah, they're banquety. They're peacocky. They're amazing. Very luxurious, them. aren't they? Very manor house banquet. Really, but classy. Oh, darling, of course. But And also, they could be quite festive, but in a non-traditional way. So, no, yes. you know, staying away from your bright golds and your greens, you can also go down the other way, which is like this, because you get the different colours within the pearls. I'm such a massive fan of these irregular-shaped pearls at the minute. I can't get enough of them. Me, I, I, I love know, them. I'm with you because of the way the light hits them. You get so much from your pearlescence because of the different texture. Now, I, I absolutely agree. I love what you just said, that this, is a different, uh, this can be festive, but it's still so classy yeah because sometimes if you go out of the traditional schemes you're in hot water you feel a bit like you're in, swimming in shark infested water mm. because it can go tacky yeah. and you don't want that this is very very classy very elegant and that's what you want isn't it gonna get all your usuals as well your beading thread your mono fenomen and your elastic remember your extended guarantee and please remember if this is the first time you've ever bought from us here at jewelry maker you're gonna get a host of free goodies too and if you have a tinker with us and you to think you know what jewelry making is not for me you can always send it back now we do have the blanks in there so you do have an opportunity to take your jewelry making to that next level as well i'm going to show you how to do some letter stamping you're going to bloom and love it SDG C19. If you like to personalise jewellery, I love anything personalised. Could be a good luck charm. It could be the perfect gift for somebody that you love. Should be 45.05, but today it's designer inspiration. We ain't giving you that price tag. We're gonna take it on down. 29.95 for all of this. The blanks, the pearls, the findings. The extended money back guarantee, SDG 
C19. Use your debit card or your credit card if you're shopping with us here today at Jewelry Maker on a night like this is what it's called. I like that. Let's go over to Lady Kishore. <laughs> Are you ready for me, Lady Kishore? I'm ready. Then I shall come over to you. Mikey and I shall saunter. Come to my parlour. I shall. I shall come. <laughs> I'm all wiry. I didn't. I forgot how to be professional today, which I apologise for. And I've seen your jewellery, and I bloom and love it. It's gorgeous. Do you, oh, this kit. And do you know this kit would go just beautifully with gold as well? So you've got that versatility too. I love this. So you can. It's a kind you know, of orchidy. Like well, you know, I've had these stamps a lot, and I think you know probably quite a lot of you have got these stamps, and they're not just for stamping. So we thought, <gasps> let's do something a bit different, and, and mm. just talk about some metal texture. And this is just two two of them. That's all. I've made a hole, and I've just uh, formed the metal a little bit, with, all with JM tools, and just made a bit of texture. Um, but what you get here is like a 3D effect, and also this. I love this look. It moves. <laughs> I love jewellery that you can play with, especially bracelets, don't you? It doesn't go all the way around, but it could if you use some wire. I tried to stay to the kit, so I used, you know, your, the little um, head pins we were just talking yeah. about. Um, but if you were going to use, well, you could make it go all the way around. I just like it when it kind of moves a little bit and makes a noise. I, I kind of like that Jingle organic fit. Yes, yeah. I love jewellery that makes a noise. You're so right. And you, and you want, you know, I always remember my mum had loads of bangles when I was younger, and she was a hairdresser, so every time she used to do jingle. jingle. I love jingle. And I, and I remember, I knew where my mum was because I could here are bracelets you know it's yeah. funny isn't it but it's, it's nice that it's, sen it's a bit sentimental maybe. it is sentimental and I think as well that we tend to sometimes think of the um, metal stamps as flat but the good thing about these stars is that you can make them into different shapes and a bit mm. more three-dimensional shapes just because they're flat they don't have to stay that way and I also decided with this necklace to just use <laughs> loads together just to show you that you can go for a full-on kind of metal feel I mean you I could have just put those on there not put any gemstones on just use that gorgeous chain and used all the gemstones for something else and had a whole other suite of jewellery yeah. um, you know if you just want a metal look but they were so beautiful that I thought I would just sort of dangle them on but this sort of goes to show you as well that these kind of designs these high-end kind of metal designs in the shops you get in kind of boutiques don't you really quite expensive and I don't think you'd look at that and think oh that's just lots of metal stamps put together absolutely no way but the elements have been put there for you to puzzle together haven't they and yeah. you know they're professional it's elements it's not difficult it's not they're difficult they're beautiful i love what you've done here let me see what you've linked it oh with the with the jump rings yep and with the skinny head pins and you've got all of that lovely texture now look at the i love these earrings i said you <laughs> really crack me up if you've got a really indecisive uh, lady in your life my mum's a libra an hour to order a Chinese takeaway with my mum. An hour. She drives me crazy. Actually, no. Look. Yes, no, maybe. Can you repeat the question? I love it. I love these. So, yes, I mean, no that's earrings. just adding, you know, a bit of stamping in there. But you can write anything. I mean, um, the Christmas tree decorations we were talking I don't know if we'll, we'll have to stop but we're talking about doing a day show with these um, and making decorations and things for presents because you can also put these you know some people love to dress their presents and wrap them yes you can put this on the top as like a little charm a that little someone can, yeah so that these stars are brilliant because people love star jewelry they love heart jewelry yeah, they? they're as the well. things that yeah. tend to well they were the things that I used to sell quite a lot of. lucky stars aren't they yeah and they, yeah. they've got like a sort of a meaning before you start so I think the stars are quite invaluable really I love it. Look at that. That's the well. that's the other kit. Sorry, oh, I've just sorry. put them all out. Right, you've put them all out. You've I've put, put them, them all out. out. I was getting out of the way of Alison. <laughs> Who oh, was good. leaving? We should all move out of her way when she's leaving. <laughs> I was she was to be out the door. <laughs> now, which one are you going to show us today, my darling? I thought I'd show you because we're doing three. I thought I'd show you a bracelet for a change. Thank you. And how to do the sort of little bit of the three-dimensional charm. Fantastic. Okay. Right, and then we are going to do some letter stamping. Don't panic. <laughs> we are doing letter stamping. These are your blanks uh, in your kit. Uh, very popular on the kit as well. It's so lovely to have your company here today at Jury Maker. Please don't forget to send us a little text. We've, I've missed you. So is Debbie. I know it's it's been weird not being here for such a long time. It's been like so I feel like the new girl today. <laughs> I do a bit like. I, what's the gossip? What's been? Go Nobody's been telling me anything. I don't know what's going on. I don't what's going on. I know that's weird. I've got a clue. I know. Withdrawal funny, symptoms. Have we had the same amount of time off? I think I, mine's been about three and a half, four weeks. I oh. think. It's yours. No, I don't get that. I, I, ten days off. It's the first te time I've ever taken ten days off in years. Oh, yeah. Since I had a child. Literally. Glad to be back. It refreshes you, though, doesn't it? 
Well, I've been mucking out 12, 13 <laughs> horses a day, so not really. But that it is, like no, I do, I, I love all of that, don't I? Mm. That, was, that was how I relaxed. I helped, eh? So you come to work for a rest then, really? Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say it, but yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's harder work for me, dear friend Leanne, who normally has to do 20 horses a day, and we have, <gasps> I, I did half of them. 20? Yeah. Good grief. It's those stupid children, isn't it? <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> now I'll, sh I'll start off by just giving you a bit of information about texturising metal and working with metal. As you work with metal, um, please forgive me if you already know this, but there'll be lots of people watching who don't. It, it hardens, it work hardens, yes. and that applies to anything, not just the sheet, that applies to your stamps. So what you need to do really is plan what design you're going to do first, because I would recommend that you make the holes before you start texturising, simply because um, if you've texturised, you've hammered, you've messed about with your blank, it could get really, really work hard and it'd be more difficult to make the holes afterwards. So if you make your holes first of all, then you know that they're there, they're ready for your design, um, and then you can do what you want to the, to the blank after that. Okay. So that's just what I would recommend, that's how I work. So what I did was, I had a little play with my blanks, I wanted to do something a little bit different that maybe I hadn't done before, bearing in mind that I've used these blanks quite a lot on the shows. So I wanted to show you, and I, I was thinking, well, you know, I'm going to just stick to the kit, so I've used everything that's in the kit, I haven't used anything that's not in the kit. Um, now I've used this, I love this, I've said before, haven't I, I this, this hole this. puncher. Do we, have, we don't have the hole puncher or we do have the hole puncher? He's trying to find a blessing. I know that when we do get it, it sells out really quickly, but yes, we get it all the it time, does. though, don't we? Ring Pip. Oh, Oxbury's on some NH. What's she doing? Not NHS. She's at NEC. NHS. She's at the NHS. She's at the NHS. NEC upstairs in the craft thing. Um, now, you can either use your hole punch, or if you have got your Dremel and you're comfortable with your drill, you can drill your holes as well. If you're going to drill your holes, can love the Dremel. you make sure that you sort of do a little punch first. It just stops your drill slipping. Um, but I'm sure if you've got your drill, you know that already so what I did for this design was I decided to make two holes in the middle of my star now depending on whether I'm using my drill I could get it dead center um, but it only goes so far with your hold uh, punching tool but it still works so all I did was I pressed my star in I'm now I'm just gonna get down onto the level so that I can see and if you haven't used this before they're really nice and simple to use and just it's like a mandrel on the top and it comes down to your blank and then you just push it through and that is a really simple way now I nearly said super simple then but my husband says I say super simple when I'm on here too much so I'm trying not to say it <laughs> I don't like it when they do that to us because my daughter and my son are my biggest critics. he's like, given me a, oh, he's you given me a complex no he said you always say super simple but it's super simple super simple and then I turned it round pushed it back into the mandrel again to make another hole so that I've got two holes in the middle. Now I, it really helps me to get down on the level so that I can see and then just as my mandrel is about to touch my blank I can then have a little shuffle around if it's not in the right place and then once I've touched onto my metal take it down. Now you don't want to screw your mandrel all the way down onto your metal because you'll leave sort of a circular mark. Mm. Um, you can feel when it's gone through and then just unscrew. These would make lovely buttons, wouldn't they? They would, wouldn't they? Because mm. you could do lots of things with that. Stars on your cardi. So I've got two holes in the middle, and then I made two holes either side to attach to my bracelet because I'd planned my design beforehand. So there's one that I've done, so you don't have to watch me making loads of holes. Can you see? Now we get onto the fun part, we get onto the texturing. So what you need to texture any metal is your block. Absolutely invaluable. Um, because you need something for your hammer or whatever you're using um, to press against. So onto your block and then you just need to decide how to texture. Now I've brought some different things with me today to show you different textures that you can do. Now all of these, to have a selection of hammers is really, really good. Now these are both JM hammers. <gasps> now, this oh, I've is, got that, I've got that, I've got that. Have you got that one? Fabulous, yeah. Both JM hammers and the steel block. Yeah, and I've got a, I've got a gizmo thrown in there for right. a crazy price. While you're doing your, your tapperooing, okay. I'm just going to quickly tell everybody yeah. what you get and then we'll give you the price and then we'll concentrate on the 
Yes. Okay. So we're going to get you're going to get the hammer that Debbie's using. This is a chasing hammer, and it's something you use quite a lot, isn't it? It's so invaluable because you've got the flat side, and that's so important for flattening out your metal. As again, when you manipulate your metal, um, your blank or your sheet will bend and bow, and then sometimes you'll want it to go flat again. So that's absolutely perfect. It's also fantastic for work hardening your metal and work hardening your wire as yeah. well on that flat end. And then you've got the other side, which is fabulous for your texture. So the, the little, um, the end here, the dappered, e the dapped end, dappered. Right, I made a word up there. Uh, <laughs> gives you that texturization, that sort of dapping tool, doesn't yeah. it? Then you've got your steel block. You'll see Debbie using that. It's really heavy, that, but it's still only two ninety-five foot PMP. Uh, now you'll see Debbie using the steel block. And then uh, we're going to throw in a wonderful coiling gizmo for you. Should be. Uh, come on now. Have you, hey, have you seen the other channel? Is doing uh, jewelry making. I ain't saying nothing about no one. Apparently, a hammer and block bundle the other day, sixty-nine pounds. <gasps> oh, I know. I was thinking about the steel block last night. I know that's a bit sad. <laughs> But I, I was, was dreaming of my steel block. I was thinking about when I first wanted a steel block, and this is the God's honest truth, I couldn't afford one because they were too expensive. Were they? And well, I, the postage's got to be loads on this, but it's not here. It's not and, and it, no, it was before jewelry maker time. And when I was thinking how much you can get one for now, and that's so good because, you know, the time's not there anymore where you necessarily have to save up for ages to get the tool you want. You I know. know. And you just want to get doing it when and you've you want got the idea in you. You want to get on with fair. it. Yeah. We're such a... We're such a society if I want it now, want it now. Aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Terrible, really. But, I mean, you can get it now. You can afford to get it now. Nine ninety five for all three of these. Uh, let me know. Were you, have you seen a, a steel block and hammer for, for more? Perhaps on another shopping channel. I'd like to know your experiences. RHG C57. So let's see how we actually work these into our jewellery designs. Okay, so... If you're going to do um, a double or triple layered piece, it's really nice to have different textures on the different pieces because the piece that the blank that shows behind, so I'm going to layer on top like that. I mean, that's very nice. It's got a brushed effect already on these blanks. But if I'm going to sort of really let that stand out, to have a different texture on the bottom one to the top just adds to it. Mm. So what I did was I got um, this is the interchangeable head hammer that we do here at JM, but you can also use um, if you raid. Um, a male member of your family's DIY box or your own DIY um, and get one of those hammers that we you know when you pull the nails out um, they hammer on oh, the other yeah, do you know what I mean the thing, claw the it's a bit similar to this so oh, um, careful with that though don't drop it on your toe oh crumbs ah. no because this gives a lovely texture so this is going to be noisy by the way so It gives you a long sort of texture and you can work the uh, blank around to change sort of the texture and how you want it to look. Now I'm not having to apply too much pressure so if you are worried about um, any issues with your hands or anything you don't actually have to hit it that hard because they're nice and soft these blanks I've thought that mm -hmm. before when I've worked with them and all I'm doing is banging the blank and then turning the actual blank itself around so that the texture sort of flows. And you will feel that as you're doing that, your star shape is changing and sort of becoming a little bit deeper in the middle and your ends are lifting up. So that's quite a nice, if I hold that up to the camera, that's quite a nice texture. Can you see? I love it. I love the texture that you get from this hammer. So you've got sort of um, longer lines of texture with the hammer there. Mm -hmm. um, now my daughter <laughs> has a pet rock as, as daughters do it's a regular thing and I've actually daughters, hit yeah. it with the rock as well for different for different textures so you can do that you hit it with it oh, you hit, used it, the, hit rock. the rock to texturize right so, so you've got something put the rock on top of it hammered it don't break the rock no no I actually hit it with the rock oh you got the rock and went whack 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 so you can do she's gonna go mad if she sees you no it's back in her bedroom it's what's fine. it called rocky Pro yeah probably <laughs> Like, what are you so, going to call this? Hammy. Yeah, and what, this is a penguin. What are you going to call this? Penguiny. Or pengy. Yeah. Yeah. What's that about? I don't know. How old is she now? She is seven, going on 23. I love seven. <laughs> it's such a cute age, because they're still, like, Max, like, if I talk to my son, who's nine now, but, oh, you've grown up so much when you're a baby, gets all upset, like, oh, I want to be a baby again, I when I was little. But I do still get kisses and cuddles from my boys. Oh, yeah. So. They're boys, aren't they? I'm Girls not, don't want it, do they? I'm not going like, to let them grow up anymore. That's, that's Me it now. either. It's depressing. Now, this side of your um, hammer that you just got with your bundle, this is fabulous as well. This gives a really lovely. And this is the one that I usually use when I'm stamping um, 
because what it does to your edges is it can really soften the edges of a blank so it gives it like a nice organic feel so I'll show you yeah um, rather than those sort of angular edges which are wonderful if you if you want it to be that sort of definite angular if you style. want it to be very yeah prominent, yeah prominent but I think it gives it quite a rustic vintage feel sometimes especially on the copper mm -hmm. copper ones um, it can sort of so I'll show you what I mean so all you have to do is you actually hit your blank and then you sort of push your hammer to one side and it actually splays the metal. It does the same with wire, actually. You slide it almost. So I'm you? actually doing it to the side. I love the, I love the effect this has. And you wouldn't realise that such a large head gives such a small little tap. So what I've done is I've softened my edges. Now I'm going to move away my blocks so that you can actually see that a bit better because it's silver on silver. But as you can see, you've got sort of sharp edges on the side, and then you've got sort of the soft edges. Love now, it. you could go round and leave the centre sort of plain. That would give a, an extra feel. But the good thing about texturising metal is you can have a play with it. It actually helps to have um, maybe a spare piece of metal that you've actually hammered on with different hammers and different things so that you can have a look and you can remember what um, texture that you've got on there. So you think, oh, I like that texture. I'm going to use that. So you do get different textures from, from different hammers and whatever you're using. So the next thing that I did, let's just finish this off and go all the way around. I'm just softening the edges. I'm also hardening my blank as I go. Now I'm going to want this one to stay on the bottom. So I want this one to be flat. And it's not flat because I've been working with it. So that's where your flat end of your hammer comes in really, really mm -hmm. handy. It's going to work hard on my piece more and it's going to flatten it down. Yeah, because it curls up otherwise. That looks amazing. So you've gone from sort of that to that and I think it does look quite it's an different. amazing difference just from a little bit of tapping just with a hammer that only cost you 9.95 with the block and the gizmo isn't it and you can play around with them to what it's sort of whatever piece whatever vibe of the piece that you're making so then to actually add some um, three-dimensional look to the piece I got the dapping block now we do have this I think it's on the website I love the dapping block <laughs> and we not got it today why? <laughs> you fool. <laughs> Why? Oh, I want true. it. Oh. I'm doing that just because I can. Okay. Like, because kids get away with it. Why can't we? <sighs> just go. <sighs> Why? It's but on our know, website. Can you put a little doozy moozy at the bottom, please? A doozy moozy? You know, a thingy majiggy. You can use your pliers if you haven't got a dapping block. I'll show you both ways. Get the minute. dapping block, it's amazing. Um, I do love this little, little gadget, it's absolutely fantastic. It's also very lightweight, so it's a really nice tool to have um, you know, in your craft bag if you're, if you're going around and, or you're working at your fairs, you can take it with you and it's not too heavy. All you do is you find, um, you've got different sizes. Different levels of domage. Of domage. And what you would usually do is put it into the largest one it fits in and then work your way down. So I don't want it to go too small but you could do that if you wanted to make a flower you could make it really three-dimensional. But I'm going to pop it into this one here and then all you do is you place right in the centre oh, and then you hammer. I love hammering. <laughs> Hammering's my thing. Yeah, it's so good to let off a bit of steam. Get hammered. Get hammered. Oops. See, now look what it does. This thing is amazing. It and is. it makes it into sort of, well, I suppose that's quite yes. a flower shape, isn't it? Love it. Now, if you wanted to, if you haven't got your dapping block, don't panic, you can use your round nose plier, so that's fine. Have well. you got the, at least give me the code for the dapping block. He's yeah. trying to work trying out how to, to do it. it. I'm being mean because I'm telling him you must put it on. Everyone needs it. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how. You need that tool. Um, you can just get your um, round nose pliers and get hold of the star end and just gently pull up oh, yeah. on each one. And you can do that even once you've... With, because when I'm making flowers, you is know... Is it the lotus flower that's like that? It is. And the petals aren't straight, are they? And I think once you've been working with metal for a while, you realise that you actually want it to look like a flower. A bit beaten, yeah. You're a bit beaten and a bit like, you know, petals aren't dead straight, are oh, they? No. And you can also get your round nose pliers and just curl very gently. I had orange roses come out in my garden yesterday. Really? Nobody knew they was there. How gorgeous. Bright orange. It's lovely when flowers come out at this time of year, isn't it? Yeah. 
and I make a lot of flower jewellery and I make a lot of flower uh, metal jewellery and it really is sort of playing with it once you've manipulated it so that you've actually got there a three-dimensional shape so you've actually taken you've you formed it from that so I think that looks completely different doesn't it yeah it's gorgeous I love it I love it. I, I am a big fan of metal stamping, though. I'm a big fan of personalising jewellery because I think it's nice for the person who's receiving it. Yep. And it's great if you're selling it. Because if I go out and I see something with any of my children's names or my mum or my sister or my it, nephew, I want to buy it for them. It's really popular as well. As a few of my friends have bought the necklaces with names on and they're not silver and they're really expensive. <gasps> I know. Really expensive. I know. It, it's so expensive. And to have it made with certain names is super expensive. Yeah. And I think, you know, as another benefit of having these for stamping alone without actually just texturising is that you've got quite a long space across the middle of the star. So if you wanted to write somebody's name, or you, could, you might potentially be able to write the word Christmas across there, whatever you want to write. Obviously, not everybody's got short names. That might Jolly. Yeah, you could write a longer name. You know, you could write Matilda across there or a longer name rather yeah. than a small one. So sometimes with some of the smaller shape, um, you can't get the name or the word that you want across. So these are really versatile for that as well. Maximus could go across there quite Maximus. nicely. Maximus. Maximus. That's a great name, Maximus. Right, I need my glasses on for this. He won't let me call him Maximus. Is that his name? Yeah, he hates it. That's a brilliant name. It's just Max, he says. He's Don't a gladiator. tell my friends in the playground that you called me that. He might mm -hmm. like it later when he's famous. Yeah, he might do. <laughs> he thinks he's famous already the way he acts. <laughs> right, all I'm going to do, what I did to make the little flower, is just pop one blank, stamping blank, on top of the other. And I just <gasps> use, now you can use um, wire. I was trying to just stay with the kit. So these are the um, pins that we sold earlier in the gold. I really love these, they're so clever. Now, all I did was, because I had Quite, it's only got sort of a little bobble on the end there and that will co go through your hole and actually come out. So I put um, one of these little Labradorite beads on and the good thing about that, if I show you on the finished one, is it sits on the back and it actually sits against your skin. So it lifts up your flower and it's really soft against your skin. Yeah, it's not harsh. I did try it on earlier. I I <laughs> so all I did was, what have I got? Two on there. I took it up through the bottom one and then find a hole in my top one so that it's sitting on the top and then two of my little pearls I love those pearls I've, I've got some alternative pearls actually <gasps> for you which because you said you love the oh I need that oh I need those oh I they're know. purple I know you love them you oh, want I them in your life <laughs> <laughs> Look how gorgeous they are. Smell them, they're beautiful. <laughs> and they're with moons. Are they all coming together? Yeah. Are you going to do that now? Don't ruin the surprise. Oh, sorry. Ruin <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I need you that. Haven't. You haven't. I need that. Someone buy it for me. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, that, oh, no, I've gone a bit weird. That's gorgeous. <laughs> I've gone a bit weird. Like the time Carol tried to mouth kiss you by accident. <laughs> She realised she loved you and then went to kiss you and then Did thought, she? no! I don't remember that. Is that bad? It happened with me and uh, Hannah Osborne the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's something going on that. in here. No. It's because there's a lot of lovely gemstones. They make us feel loved, don't they? <laughs> We're all like hippies. <laughs> look, look, they're gorgeous! Oh, you, now, are you a purple lover, are you, my oh, love? That's my favourite colour and this is not even normal purple is it it's gorgeous how would you describe that it's got Mosey, different shades again lilac-y and it's got different shades in there and i can see gold and green is it mauve or is it not dark enough for mauve it's not, yeah i think it probably is mauve i can see mauve in there i love i love that you've got two of june's birth gemstones in uh, the the wheels are gorgeous they're gonna go so well with the wheels of um Labradorite, aren't they? Well, you could do exactly this design, but with that, because you've got the same shapes and everything in the in the gemstones. Oh, that's a great add-on. I'd get, but yeah, just get both. They're amazing. I, do, I I cannot tell you how much I love moonstone. It makes me feel all giddy. I cannot tell you how much I love pearls. They make me feel giddy mm. too. I'm really connected with these gemstones. I think because and don't forget they're real pearls. These are real freshwater pearls. And there's a lot of oh, we're calling them plum coloured. That works, doesn't it? Can you imagine those with gold as well? Be, oh, it's gorgeous. Oh. I love that compliment. They're gorgeous. I don't think I've ever seen that colour before here. They're lovely then, aren't they? They're lush. They? I love them. I want yeah, them. Yeah, I'm a lover. I'm a lover of those. <laughs> 
I'm I into that. that. I'm into this bundle. Cashew pearls, you've been talking to me about it earlier that you're obsessed with cashew pearls. You know what I love? Putting the two different shapes and textures of pearls together. I'm really into that at the minute. And I've been putting it with um, precious metal clay and polymer clay <gasps> to make kind of organic sh things. Have you been sculpting? I have. I've been doing birds and hummingbirds oh. and things. And I'm, I'm on a big Mocking journey. Mockingjays? And it's all of these sorts of... And you know, they're not easy to source, these unusual coloured pearls and unusual shape pearls. You know, if you go and do an internet search, you don't see many. And the ones you do see cost a fortune. And I tell you, when you want them, that's when you can't get them. Uh, oh, no, you need some cashew pearls. I'm just going to the jewellery maker because they've usually got quite a lot. <laughs> ah, I know. Also, yeah, it's always happening. 23.85 is such a great price tag for such wonderful gemstones. You know what? This is a strand of distinction. You're going to get such suit. Look how long this strand is as well, by the way. Really long strand, 14.95 for them all, which is less than five pounds each. You just got to get them. You got the extended money gap, uh, ma blah, 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 money back guarantee from now <laughs> until the first tripped over me words. Then <laughs> tripped over them. Uh, uh, extended money back guarantee until the 31st of January, which is crazy. Oh, that's balls. good. I didn't know about that. Yes, yeah, in case they're Christmas presents. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? Yes. Try doing well, that when you. Where have I been? Someone, yeah. <laughs> I tell, my friend Melody bought a Christmas present in May and she's got no chance no. of taking that back now, no. has she? Not from us, of course. 14.95, loads of you are enjoying this. So I'm let's get, continue with my Deborah Cashaw and have a look. Deborah Cashaw Cashaw. That's what your name is. Oh, that ooh, Did you, you like just came to me in a dream? Not in a dream, like a daydream. It's a sign. It is a sign. Oh, I need those. Can I just hold yes, them? Yes, they're part of your Deborah Cashaw Cashaw. Can I just hold them? Oh, just... No, they are actually gorgeous. Just do that. I, look I need look them. over there whilst pushing them into your handbag. If my husband was watching, that would be a great stocking filler for me or a birthday present, in fact, Alex. <laughs> Does Santa come to you? Yeah, of course. I work hard. I, I need to put my stocking out and see if I've been good or if I just get a tangerine and a lump of coal. I want this in my stocking. Okay, all I'm going to do... I love it. So I need to stop talking about these gemstones and get on with it, don't I? I'm going to. No, it's, Liam's not very good at telling me off. I've just noticed. I shouldn't have said that. He's just letting us get on with it. All I've done... This would have been Danny. He would have been having a mental breakdown by now. <laughs> wouldn't he? He's thinking, I'm so glad she's been off all the time. Um, I've put two of the um, gemstones in there, uh, my pearls, and then I'm just going to run the wire back down and through both of the holes like so. Now this is where I need to grab my, oh no I've done it, and just pull. Now if you have trouble just hold on very gently and just tug. And then all I did was I wrapped the remainder of the head pin, try not to lean forward, around so that it actually, you'll have far more time because I've just seen I've only got a few minutes to go so I'm really hurrying. So there. Now you could do that with your 0.4 wire. You could um, hold it in place. Now, so you can see that that, that kind of moves, and you've got the stem. And you could have put one gemstone in the middle there if you wanted to. And then all I did was a beaded length of my assorted gemstones. I added my clasp. I like, what have you done that on the be uh, just beading thread? Just yeah, beading you thread. Just that, didn't you? Beading thread, um, one half a treble cast, and all I've done is in between three of my gemstones, I've put these lovely um, jump rings. You know, oh, they're they kind of a bit like yeah. nautical, aren't they? They're, they're like lovely. Very, I've popped those on, um, and then all I'm going to do is just pop it through here and crimp it in place. We found the dapper. Have you found the dapper? Yes. Um, I we don't mean a smart man. <laughs> Do we? Very dapper. A dapper man, a dapper block. Yeah, a dapper um, block. So I just put one of those on each side and ended up, so it's not a difficult make at all, and it's not a time-consuming make, it's quite good fun, but you end up with sort of a movable 3D flower. Um, I think I actually used one of the letter stamps on its side to do this particular texture on the top here. I just put the stamp on its side and hit the bow. Oh, yeah because um, I was playing. Um, that one's obviously a lot neater. But um, yeah, so that you can have three-dimensional Metal look looks. At the dapper, look at the dapper, look at the How much is it? It's not four ninety. Shh, we're not supposed to say it. Like, we're not oh. supposed to put that price tag on. Okay, we? well I won't say right, how much. Can you it's quickly? It's going to sell out, isn't it? Four ninety five. Dapping tool. Quick, quick, quick. Where's it gone? Oh, you've got to put it underneath the. Ki oh, I see. Right. Quick. He's got to do that for legal reasons. He wasn't oh, okay. supposed to put it there because it was only four ninety five. Now we're going to see how to use it. Look down the bottom. This is the kit. Twenty nine ninety five. There's your dapping. Where is it? Bring it back. Mm. 
Dapper. Dapper. <laughs> is it now? now? Anyway, we, we're going to show how to use it. What's the code for it then? There it is. There, there, there. Four ninety five. Very 99. good. And do you use it a lot? I use mine all the time. Like, yeah, absolutely all the time. Because you do loads of things with it. What what, what can you, you do with a dapper? I've got one. What can I do with you it? You get two. Um, what are the what would these be called? I'm going to call them whamming tools. Whamming tools. I like that. Yeah. With different. Um, one's slightly sharp and one's a flat end. So what you can do is just make three dimensional shapes. Um, you can put anything you want. You can put squares. You can put circles. Um, I've made flowers. I don't know if you saw my metal uh, designer inspiration. If you find me on Facebook, um, on my designer page, there's some pictures on there of lots of flowers that I made with this tool. And because they've got different sizes, you've always got, you can do little flowers, you can do large flowers, and you, you can create yeah. the same look. Because if I had a large piece of metal that maybe I'd cut out into flower shape, I'd start at my largest hole, and then I'd use my hammer, then I'd go down and down so that I got a nice dome shape rather than sort of straight sides. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it makes a curvature in your metal and it will make a nice sort of lotus flower shape or you can go smaller and smaller so that you could have quite a closed um, flower and you can use any size because you get what, one, two, three, you get five different sizes of circle on your dapping block. Um, and then you just need your hammer and your six, metal. Six, isn't it? Six, six sizes. One, two, three, four. Six, I can't Because it's a square. Yeah, That's I knew, the only I knew reason that, I did that. I knew that. I, was, I did a moment where I had a brain. <laughs> Never happened. I knew that. Six is what I meant to say. Now, does it just have to be a star? Can I use other different shapes, you can sizes? Use, you can use one? anything you want. Um, I tend to have um, saw out flower shapes. I use it loads for flower shapes because it makes gorgeous flower shape. Um, also circles. So if you want to make your own sort of bead cap for your um, gemstones to sit into, like you know the little hats, you can make those. Mm -hmm. If you texture the metal first and then put it in your dapping block, yeah, you can make some lovely little sort of bead caps for that. Um, so that you could use our cutting tool to make out little circles in either sheet or you can cut these down. You know you can change um, the shape of your stamping blanks if you want to. Um, so it's a great simple to use tool, you don't have to be afraid of it, um, to texturise and to shape a flat piece of metal into a domed piece Give it of that. metal. Make it make it cave in. Yeah. You could also use this with your moulding compound to make yeah. moulds, oh, yeah. which is another great Absolutely. idea. Now, we're fast selling out of these. How many have we got left? There's four, they're only $4.95, so they're going to have to be dead quick. Now, I've got something else, Amaze. This is mine. Well, I am. Yeah. Yes, you keep that one. That is yours this time. You're not stealing. That is definitely mine. I haven't seen these. I oh, I love them. these. So this is different scroll. Uh -huh. What's it called? Is it's it a penguin, penguin sc yeah. scroll? Penguin font. And it's letter stamping. Uh, are you going to show us how to use these? Could I have an M? I love it. <laughs> I'll have an M, please, Bob. Do you like the way how I answered the fact that you are going to... Yes, you are going to show us. You can please can have an M. Of course I am. Let's move all this out of the way. Now, these are going to sell out, I reckon. Every time we bring these to air, boom, gone. You need them. Just know that. You have got an extended money-back guarantee. Uh, we're going to give you the price tag straight away because we do believe these are going to sell out very quickly. They're such a great price tag when you compare to other places, other channels, other websites, other places where you're going to get grafty bits, Six, uh, 9 95 And you've got to know that they come with the case. Let's have a look at what we're buying. They will come all wrapped and oiled and just yeah. for you to get out and then put in the right positions. Now, these are that different font, so they're fun. They're quirky. Do they come out this size as well? They come out a little bit smaller, don't yeah, they? Yeah, a bit smaller. Oh, they come out smaller. But okay, they are uppercase. I do quite like to use... Um, just uppercase sometimes because if you want something to really stand out um, on a design then you can just use the uppercase letters you know what's fantastic about this and I've never seen this ever before is how they're designed that they're in the case and you're not looking to try and find your letter for 10 minutes with your glasses on because it, you just know exactly uh, where it is yeah I love that that is so not because I have done that scrolling around here trying to get you to do something before huh. they because they come oiled they smell like my granddad used to smell they're supposed to come oiled people have said before yeah. it's, it's so that when they're shipped that they stay in really good they condition they don't get rusty they don't get rusty it's brilliant it's all about quality and, and these things count they really count they do count so all you need to do when you get them each one will be in a little sort of cellophane wrapper and inside will be like a greasy um, substance just take that off with kitchen roll don't wash it off you know don't get no, the diff out you'll rust it so you, you know they're you, there to protect yeah and so you want to leave sort of a little bit of that on really which will do you can feel like you're taking it all off with a bit of kitchen roll but it will keep your tools oh, from rusting it oh it will it will it will it will 
How do I use this gorgeous font? Right, so what I'm going to do is, and forgive me if you've seen this before, but again, I'm sure some of you haven't. Um, I use my masking tape, and I use my masking tape as a ruler um, to give me a nice straight line to work on, and also to keep my material down on my block. It keeps it nice and firm. Now, if you wanted to be really precise, you could take your ruler and you could place it along the bottom and say you were going to write dad you could find exactly the center of your stamp and then you could mark on your masking tape a little pen mark and you could do it for each letter if you want to be very precise now i'm not a very precise worker and my stamping comes out okay i think so what i tend to do is do it by eye always start with the middle letter and the reason that we do that is because if you were writing say dad and you started with the d and you put it where you thought it was and then you realize you've actually got loads of room at the other side and it's not central at yeah. all so if you start with your middle letter then and you work either side you can pretty much get your letter central okay perfect so what should we go for should we go for dad seeing as i said about dad yes and then i'm going to make you do some good luck charms for me and the girls okie cokey wokey I'm going to make you do stuff. She's going to make me. So I've got my A here. You can have a look at the bottom of your stamp so that you can see um, how it needs to be placed onto your blank so that it sits the correct way. So your uppercase letters are really easy to do that. Pop it in the middle. Use your masking tape as sort of a centre, um, a ruler. And then just taking, you can use the flat. If you do use the flat end of this hammer, um, it can mark it. So if you need, I've actually got about three of these because I use one for flattening and I don't want to mark and other ones for hitting with. So if you are using this for flattening your wire or flattening your metal, don't use it for stamping, get another okay. one. So I'm going to just a bit of ash. Careful. So what I've done, I've done it twice there. You can either give it one thump or give it two. As long as you don't move the stamp, that's okay to do that. So you need a D, you got your D, yeah? I've got my D, I can't see, there we go. So. I'm going to the left or your right of the um, letter so that it's central. Careful. Remember to be careful <laughs> when you do this. You're making me nervous. Careful. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Careful. Sorry. Because I know what I'm like. Careful. <laughs> so I say to my dogs, careful. Careful. Steady. 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 Yay! Simple. Don't you love it? <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? These are really easy to stamp on as well, these, um, these stars. They're nice, soft metal. Um, so then you might want to make um, a hole in that, you know, to hang it. Might want to blacken it. You might want to darken it. And you know what's a really great way of doing it is to take a permanent marker, write it, get it right in the groove of the letters, and then you can, nail varnish remover will do it. Yeah. And just take, take it, it across the top and it will remove the excess and then your letters will be highlighted. So depending on what look you're going for, you might just like them as they are because they do really show up on these silver blanks. Or you can use alcohol inks on these we'll stamps. We'll see those later. Um, you can use all different ways of, of changing the effect, but I mean that's that's dad. So that could be on you know your Christmas tree. That could, could be go on a present. Could go on a card. Could as go on a, a charm card. as well. Um, wine glass charms I made with <gasps> these last year. Oh yes. You know like the medium memory wire or the smallest memory wire. Make two loops so that it will retain its shape. Before you make the loop, pop on um, your blank and maybe two gemstones, different colour ones, and um, put the name. And then they take it home with them when they go. And it's and you don't need placemats then either, place names. And you know when people at your house and they put their glasses down, you don't always know whose drink it is, do yeah. you? And also I did it for the Christmas table because then that was like their little gift as well, which is I quite love nice. It. I love Christmas doing things like that. That's when crafters come into their own, isn't it? Yes, Christmas time <laughs> definitely for crafters. Anything, anything, or Easter. Like a bit of Easter crafting any, as well. any excuse to craft, really. Yes. Um, these are great as well just because you can see when it's written, it's very clear. It's not, you know, sometimes you get really, really intricate fonts, but you can't actually read them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's important that you can yeah. read them indeed, yeah. isn't it? Uh, now, these are close to a sellout. How many have we got left? You've got to be very quick. £9.95. Uh, uh, QZGX03, please check out baskets if you want them. I love them. Now, have you got any, um, t any text messages? Please send them in. Any questions? Please send them in. Uh, Sarah is saying... Welcome home, yeah, thank you, I missed you, I missed you too. I broke my nose playing Twister. I was face up in a pair of jean clad bottom cheeks smack down in the side of the window. Oh, painful. Now that's how you break your nose oh. during Twister. I love Twister. That's got to hurt. That's making my eyes water thinking about it. D uh, ben likes the fact that you, you've called them jean clad bottom cheeks. He likes that's that. That's very polite and he very poetic. It is. 
You're going to use that in one of your songs. Your jean clad <laughs> bottom cheeks. <laughs> Who's singing it now? Uh, if that is a hit, then do remember to take royalties from them. Uh, get those get those text messages through to us. We love hearing from you. We love your gossip. You can Facebook us. We've got loads of things to show you after the break. We've got some great, great kits. We've got some wonderful bundles. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. The Jewellery Maker Wall of Fame is where you get to showcase your skills as a jewellery designer. Each week, one lucky entrant will win £100 credited to their account and the runner-up receives £50. If you want to enter your design, just send a photo to studio at jewelrymaker.com or you can post your photos to Wall of Fame, The Genuine Gemstone Company, Unit 2D, Eagle Road, Moons Moat, Redditch, B989HF. Get making and good luck. The Collector's Choice features high-caliber gemstones which are prized for their outstanding attributes. They could be examples of rare gemstones, gemstones of pure clarity or exceptional quality. They're all hand-faceted by our experienced lapidrists in our cutting houses in the heart of Jaipur. This maximizes the brilliance and luster of the gemstones. The Collector's Choice from Jewelry Maker. You can now keep in touch by liking Jewelry Maker UK on Facebook. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. Famed for their openness of colour, our Hunan Peridot gemstones are sought after for their bright greens and graceful golden undertones. Brought to life by their dazzling brilliance, we are able to bring out the pure hues, the fire and the sheer brilliance of this gem. We only source raw crystals with the potential to show off all of these remarkable qualities. For a gem full of sparkling bright greens and glorious golden tones, look no further than our Chinese Hunan Peridot. Maker ships to the following countries. We offer two delivery services, standard and premium. So wherever you are in the world, Jewelry Maker are never far away. Here at Jewelry Maker, we love seeing your jewelry creations, learning about your inspiration and reading your blogs. If you write your own craft or jewelry blog, then we'd love to hear from you. Simply tweet us at jewellery underscore maker UK with your blog link and we'll be in touch. Jewellery Maker offers an extensive range of creative workshops for all levels from beginners right through to advanced. Each workshop is run by our approachable tutors who are all friendly, knowledgeable and are specialists in their field of expertise. Our popular courses are tailor-made to suit your needs and to help you get started with a new hobby or to advance your skills onto the next level. We keep the class sizes small to ensure you get plenty of one-to-one -one attention, so book early to avoid disappointment. For more information, contact our course centre or visit our website. Hello, my loves. It's lovely to have your company. Debbie Kershaw and I have been eating Lucy's seeds. Well, I have. I'm just sort of bringing you into the blame there. Uh -huh. Thank you. Now, I've got something brand new that you're going to love. You know those amazing pendant findings or earring findings or whatever you want them to be findings that I showed you earlier? I've got them for you when you need them. What an amazing belt buckle these would make, by the way. How amazing would they be as a belt buckle? I love that idea. That would be where you clipped it on there, wouldn't it? Don't think that would be cool? Now, these are earrings, aren't they? They're definitely, oh, hang on, we'll go that side. Earrings, they'd be fantastic for that. They're very Dion, which is why we hid them from her earlier. Now, you could use those little gaps to weave in and out of. This could be a pendant. Could go on a really long over the head. Oh, I like that idea. What about this? Over, just bit of chain over the head like that? That's what I'd do. Lush. Yeah. I love those long jangly ones. 
So you're getting five of these. And I'm going to see if they're easy to uh, manipulate. Yes, they are. They're easy to manipulate. So you can bend them around a little bit. You can put them in your dapper. I just sort of made that go a bit domey there. You get five. I love the colour. I love that they're textured. They look a bit Italian because they're textured. And, and I love that you've got so much. These could be a bit Roman goddess. They could be a bit Grecian, couldn't they? They could be belt buckles. They could be earrings. They could go in overhead pieces. They could be Christmas tree decorations. Have a look because you could make a little polymer clay angel to go inside. Or a picture of Ben, he says. I'd like that, Ben. You look a bit... I bet you were always Angel Gabriel, weren't you, Ben? You were, yes. Now, get yourself on the phone, lines, aren't they lovely? They're fancy and they're brass. K-L-A-Z-20 is your item code. Now, how big are these? They're 45 millimetres. And I love the... I love the fancified texture that you get loads of you grabbing these in big um, how much are you going to do these for them because everyone's multi-buying must be a good price tag less than 10 pounds uh, two pounds each you're saying less than 10 pounds 9.95 klaz20 debbie kershaw um, what kind of mediums can i work these with are there other things that i can do yeah, I mean they're um, they're very Bollywood, aren't they? They're quite ethnic. Oh yeah. And that whole tribal ethnic um, things uh, vibe is quite in for jewellery this season. I quite like the idea of um, using wire to weave in and out, and maybe add some little gemstones or some fringing. Or you know what you could do? You could push that into um, our moulding compound and actually make a really nice texture out of them, couldn't you? Yes, I'm obsessed with the moulding compound. So that you could make them go further that way because then after you've used them, you've still got the texture, so you could maybe make um, polymer components the same. I like quite like the idea of making like a, um, <coughs> excuse me, so a little choke on Lucy's seed. Uh, a domed cabochon of resin with something in it because yeah. I know Fleur's obsessed with resin I want to uh, her, her pieces are amazing I love them uh, now uh, you could work these into so many different ways couldn't you you know like Debbie was just saying with the polymer clay use it with your molding compound what about in, in conjunction with some wire work what if you're doing a big bib wire work bib and one of these was a feature piece and in the middle you had maybe a malachite pendant or so you know a malachite cabbage would be gorgeous I wonder the diameter here of this this part here actually is there a, a stick of measurement yes here's a ruler Etta Ruchka how they say it in uh, Russia at a ruchka. It is, oh, I can never work this out, two and a half centimetres or an inch. Is an inch two and a half centimetres? Um, about, I would say. Yeah, yeah, about that, about an inch, that is, if you're working in inches. 9.95, loads of you there. Don't forget, we need you to talk to us. We want your uh, text messages. Send them in. 60777, Cheryl, you've got yours. Carol and Tina and Hazel and Julie. Send us a message. Sue's got two, Patricia's got three. Uh, nine pounds, nine five pence. Let us know, what are you going to do with yours? Our text message subject of the day was, what have you broken and where? Mike, have you ever broken a bone? Yeah, look, my finger is, look at it. How did you do that, Michael? How did um, you break your finger, Michael? I fell over on it. Fell over. Was it snowing? Were you drunk? Um, <laughs> Elaborate. It was slippy and I fell over. And How old were you? Um, it was recent. It was a few years ago. A few years ago? Dr you were drunk, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we've got somebody wants Ben on the text message. Let's have a look at that then. Says he says, Ben, you may have my jean clad bottom cheeks with pleasure. Well, so does me. <laughs> Ooh. He would like more details of your jean clad bottom cheeks, <laughs> is what he said. I'm not getting, I'm not silla. I'm not silla. Wish I was. Now, uh, still some of those available. Now, we should do like. Blind date, shouldn't we show? Let's do a blind date show. Do you remember that? Blind yeah. date. Uh, I know two people that have been on blind date. Really? Two. Yeah. Now, what am I doing? 
No. Oh, yeah, I've got some lovely jewellery for this, which I may steal. And these are all great for letter stamping, by the way. BTW. What have they stamped on these? They're, oh, I love that. What does it say? Let's see. It says Guy on it. Hang on. It did say, apparently, congratulations, Ben, on your new job, but then told, Tom Fulcher came back. I mean, where do you stand there? Where do we stand there? On, oh, don't we? This is from Nanny Sue, so I wonder if she's put Ella Rose on here. Now, have a look at this. Now, all this texture, I'm going to show you in a minute what you're getting, but I love the fact that you've got all these blanks and the gemstones to go with. These are gorgeous. Done by Nanny Sue. Let's have a look. Aren't they gorgeous? Now, you could letter stamp those. I'm going to give you a beautiful matrix box. Now, you've only seen this a few times before, but look at this. You get... I love... I haven't seen this yet. No. Hang a bet. Wait a minute. You get... Debbie Kershaw, have you seen these? You get clusters of gemstones ready done. No. Charm clusters, look. Oh. So they come like that. I love it. Or you could hold it from the middle, but look, look. So you get all these rose quartz ones. Aren't they lovely? And is this black spinel? Oh, black onyx, rose quartz and black onyx. Look at these. They're gorgeous. Oh, I love, I love this idea. Because do you know what, especially if you've got dexterity problems, there's nothing worse than not being able to hold on to something long enough to make a cluster out of it, no. is there? Now, you are getting chain. Let me show you. You get a metre of the oval link chain. Then you're also getting these discs, which are fantastic. They're already texture free. And what I like about these, they've got two holes in them. And you get 10 of those. Now you get your jump rings, they are closed jump rings by the looks, let me have a look, let me know, hang on, can you see them Liam, what am I getting, you've got the jump rings, What? they're 6 mil jump rings, you get 20 of those, then you're getting your lobster claw clasps, 2 of those, 15 by 8, you're getting the flower blanks, you've got 10 of those, those are 10 millimetres, and then you're getting your earring findings. And these are the ones that I love. And I tell you for why. Because they've got that texture on them. Now, these are wonderful for putting polymer clay on too, because they've got a bit of texture, so it'll adhere. But also things like um, your resin will go on there really nice. Anything really, they, but they look great, just plain on their own. And then when you look here, round the back, there's your loop. So you can hide everything. You don't have to show the matrix of it all. You could just go straight like that. Really, that's the easiest pair of earrings you've ever made, isn't it? Because mm. it's all done for you. It looks technical, but it sure ain't. So you get all of this in your matrix box. We've seen the wonderful Nanny Sue's jewellery. Get it in your life. You've got, I love the fact, how many of the clusters do we get them? Let's count them, shall we? One, two, you get six of each. Oh, you get six clusters, that's right. Yeah, six clusters of four gemstones. I love this. So this is a new thing. This is a thing that's new. BJDL41 is your ideal game. It's only been on once before. You need to get this last in stock, last remaining stock from when these launched, when it was so popular. Who launched these? The gorgeous Lucy. <laughs> I can do it. Got Lucy written all over these. These have 19 pounds and 95 pence. Amazing value. Don't forget to text us in if you are shopping with us here today at Jewelry Maker. We love you. Uh, and we want to know your gossip. Samina, hello, Samina, you've got yours. Sweetie, you've got yours. Pat and Hazel, Susie, Anna, anonymous in Worcestershire. 19 pounds and 95 pence. 36 pence per piece. Be careful how you say that. Uh, 55 pieces all together. I said, I, I said 30 sacks by 30 sacks. Uh, use your, your debit card or your credit card to shop with us today. And please remember that you've got that extended money back guarantee. You know, you can, um, you can say things and not realise that you've said the wrong thing. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I do that frequently as well. Do you? Yeah, all the time. All the time. All the time I do that. Uh, it is great to have your company. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this bundle amazing? What would you do with this, Debbie Cashaw? It, uh, I'm looking at the necklace that was done there, and there's a designer who... This is quite the signature look of theirs, and they tend to do lot What's begins with C. With yeah. An L. Yep, that's yeah. the one. And they tend to do just lots of different layers of chain, and they have these connectors, and it just looks so good. I love that look. And so to me, that looks really designer. So I would just do a chain with layers, and I just incorporate here and there the connectors because I think they just look so high end and pretty. That, that is a very beautiful piece of jewellery. That I'd wear that. Th I would wear that loads. I might wear that actually. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> I'm going to wear, I love that. It reminds me of my auntie Jean. She wears things like this. You've got a nan called Jean, have you? My, aunt, my auntie's name was supposed to be Jenny, Jennifer, but my grandfather got it wrong when registering, called her Jean. And he said, oh, it begins with the same thing. But it wasn't what my grand, she'd had twins, my grand, she was out of it. She didn't know what was going on. So my granddad just took himself down the pub before he took himself. <laughs> It was done in those days. Uh, now, desserts arrived in the form of Mark Smith. I just saw him. He'd arrived uh, with the main course of Kishore. And we, have, of course, had a starter of tarry this morning. <laughs> Why the main course? You're the main course. I? Yeah. I love a good old meal. What's your favourite main course? If you go for a meal Ooh. out, what's your favourite? Well, I don't eat meat, so... <gasps> It I'm never coming out to dinner <laughs> with you. Or can you order the steak and give it to me then? Oh, just eat yeah, the vegetables. I can. I like um, pasta and I like risotto. Tell me you like oh, risotto. No, I don't like risotto very much. Do you eat much. seafood? I do eat fish here and there. Um, Lobster? No. Oh. I'm very plain. If I have to eat fish, I'll eat very plain fish. Oh. But um, what no, do we so do if we go out for dinner? Then where do we go? What would you? Well, that's fine. Is it? Because I like to. I like to do that thing where I eat some of your food. That's okay. Like I'm a sharer. I want people to enjoy what I'm eating. Yeah. And I get food envy a lot. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of food envy. <laughs> <laughs> I had a ploughman's yesterday. It was lovely. Ooh, yeah. Still man beef. I had. I like cheese. Yeah, I love it. Now look at this. What I've got for you. Oh! Don't think of chocolates when you look at this. Oh, oh, but you can't help it, can you? I'm firstly going to give to you the goldy silver. Is it silver you're calling it silver? I'm calling that gold. Are you calling that gold or silver? But this is silver. Oh, maybe it's silver. No, it's gold. Is it silver or gold? Platinum. I can see both. Maybe it's platinum. I love it's like you know where mercury spills out of a oh. thermometer mm -hmm. I don't know if that's legal is it legal if you spill your thermometer and it because like, you don't have mercury ones but I remember my grandma smashing one and it all went blob 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 it looks like liquid terminator yes <laughs> but you're not allowed to touch it that's no. one thing for sure because I remember my grand making me stand on the sofa until she'd hoovered it all up <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it it's mercury and I was like ah! No, it um, does look but like But it does that, look yeah. like that. Is it all amazing shapes, but so uniform at the same time? Mm. Just like Liquid Terminator, when they're so uniform, but so little globules, and they're wonderful. I love these. Aren't they great? Is it hematite? It sure is hematite. It's no, lovely. it's not. It's agate. Is it? Coated ag. Oh, you got a... Oh, yeah. That won't tarnish, though, will it, Liam? This is a great big... Thick, gorgeous coating on your agate, and it's so thick. They're lovely. I love the colour. Then the reason that now Hannah Oxbury told me the reason they coat different gemstones because you always get a different metallic effect. Now we're looking at this now. If we if we were looking at hematite or pyrite, we'd say, oh, it looks silver, or it looks gold. Now we can't tell, and no, that's because it's, it's on different. agate. So yeah. we're really thrown as to is it gold is it silver is it the most amazing pale 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 gold with a silvery hint i love it it's unusual it's a bit like those pearls where as you move it you see different colors in there don't you and look at the shape and the everything about these i like a bit strawberry shaped aren't they <coughs> almost heart. yeah but they are you we're describing them as hearts but i wouldn't say there are there's a huge definition in the heart which i like actually because it's making me it's making me think I've got different options. I love these. Mm. I'm a huge fan. Are these brand new, my doll? They've only been to, to wear once. I need them. 
Who did it? The gorgeous Becky. Oh, Ed. Ed. I haven't seen Ed for ages. Be here later, won't he? Now, it's Ed and Mark together. Oh, that's good. We're going to give you the... No, they're already flying on the... Hey, Pat and Menorca, she's woken up from her siesta. <laughs> Bleary-eyed from another sangria-filled afternoon. I, I, do you like the way I describe Pat and Menorca all the time? Oh, she's having a... Oh, she's drinking this, that, the other. She's probably not. Have a look. Don't get concerned about Pat, because we're <laughs> making all of this up. <laughs> like, it's our own imaginations. Like, here's Pat... On a balcony, again, in a <laughs> bikini, waving, going for a swim after sangria, not advised. SXGP39, 160, I would just love them. And so are you loving these. Sarah, oh, 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 Sarah Guest Design has got these, I think. Sean, Nancy, Jennifer, Julie, Pat, Alison, Jill, Natalie, Jewelry Maker from the Scottish Borders, Wendy, Stuart, and Zara. You've got yours. So, hang on a minute. Did I say that these were 6 95 Brilliant. Get two. Brilliant. I love it. It's like the other day when I went into a shop and it was one bottle of wine for £6 or two bottles of wine for £6.25. Really? No brainer. So it was four for me. <laughs> uh, six pounds and ninety-five pence. SXG P thirty-nine is your item code. Absolutely gorgeous of these. Now I know you're going to want them. Now are we calling these purple? Oh, do you know what kind of purple these are? Blackberry purple. Princely purple. What prince? As in kiss? As in purple rain? Oh, you do that well. But can you do it when it goes like that? Well. <laughs> oh, I like these. I love that colour. I love them together. Mm. Do you love? I'd have an earring, one of each colour in each ear. Mm. What would you do with these, Debbie Cashaw? They'd be quite nice as petals, wouldn't they? Because mm. they're Ooh. you know, because they're not the definite heart shape. They could be hearts if you wanted to, because you could put a little bead in the middle there and it would make it more of a heart shape, but like you said, I think there's more versatility because they're not really, really obvious. So I think they'd be lovely as petals. With You're getting an electric blue iridescence off of these. And, and I don't know. If I move away so it's a bit whiter, can you see the... Oh, oh Debbie, I really like these. They look different. They'd be nice with the pearls from the kit, wouldn't they? Perfect. Rose gold, traditional gold, silver. Where do you go with this colour, Debbie? Where does Debbie Cashaw go? I think traditional gold, traditional sort of yellow gold looks beautiful. And I suppose because we're coming to like the festive season and party time, you know, I might change my mind in summer. But at the minute, I think, um, yeah, traditional gold or rose gold. The great thing about changing your mind is it's not, it doesn't mean that you have to dismantle everything. You could, you've still always no. got the gemstones. It's not like card craft where once you've stuck it, you've stuck it. Yeah, it's done. You know, that's what I love about jewellery making. CDG, P, now do Debbie Kishore and I are very excited about these. I love them. I think they could be rings, they could be earrings, mm. they could be pendants. You could put them in tiaras, fascinated. You could put them together. What are you going to do with yours? Prom setting them might be nice as well. 180 carats, they're 14 millimetres. Loads of you are loving these. 6.95, jewellery maker in Pennsylvania. You have got yours. Jill, you've got yours. It's Deborah. I think it's PA. Is that Pennsylvania? Or Philadelphia? I don't know. I'm not down with it enough. Uh, or clever enough. Uh, Jill, Maureen, Shaniwani, Carol, Janet. Most of you that got the last one have got these. It is Pennsylvania. How do they talk in Pennsylvania? Like, it's not like Transylvania, is it? <laughs> Oh, that's in Romania. <laughs> where is it where vampires come from? Is that Transylvania? Transylvania, yeah. I get the two confused. Do you remember Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula? Mm -hmm. Well, with Keanu. Oh, yeah. I love Keanu. So do I. I. Do. Oh, point break. <gasps> He's never been hotter. And Patrick's in that as well. I know, it's like a, <laughs> oh, my brain loves you both. <laughs> he was, Patrick Slade was proper hot in I that. I love that film. I love Patrick. Mm -hmm. And Keanu. It is, I might go and watch that tonight. Have I've Let's got that on it. DVD. I love it. Who doesn't want to be that surfer chick? Oh. Why aren't I her? Why aren't we in that film? 695 CDG P92 is your item code. 
It's jealousy, yeah, jealousy. That's what it is. <laughs> Six ninety-five. These are gorgeous. Please make sure you get them now. I might have to have a bit of a steal of those. Fourteen is what you're saying, is it? Well, I like these. These are the first things I grabbed earlier because we haven't seen these for ages. Very Bieber, yeah. very Mary Quant. Yeah, very Mary Quant, yeah. Very Mary Quant. Not like social media or like Justin Bieber, no. Bieber was a 60s designer. My mum used to go on about Bieber all the time. You've got loads of clothes from Bieber, have you, Ben? Found them in the loft, stolen them off your mum. You're, you're selling her memories if you put them. Okay, not actually his mum, somebody else's girlfriend's godmother. Now, these are great for belts, these are great for earrings, they're very 60s. These but, boots are made for walking. <laughs> this, again, the sick, clever, um, clever buying, again, like forecasting trends, because this 60s vibe, this updated 60s vibe, is really in fashion this season. Again, so if you want to follow that into your jewellery designs, because that's what people are going to be wanting, that's what they're going to be looking for for the next year. Um, and I also love the way that you can hang things in the middle of these. You know, you don't have to make it sort of the 60s vibe. You can go completely different. You can wire, um, wrap round it with wire. You can hang a gemstone in the middle. You could just use one. You could use lots together if you want to go for full impact. Quite versatile, really, aren't they? Really versatile. And I love the fact you can weave in them out yeah, of like them. That. that looks really good. Bit of gold wire, weave it like four strips of thick gold wire wo woven in and out in a bas baskety sort of manner. Mm -hmm. Lush! I love these big gemstones and, and, and I love the 60s as well. I love the 60s fashion. You're thinking about Andy Warhol and you're thinking about, you know, all of these amazing, I, I love it, the boots, everything. I love the 60s fashion mm -hmm. and I think these are just going to be amazing and they're also great sewn into your clothing aren't they these would also work if you want to fill them up with resin or polymer clay loads of you in for this one please get them if you if you've never worked with this kind of shape and um, before those hollow rounds think about what you can actually put in between these spaces as well what you can dangle whether it's going to be a big round and, and just talk about texture with yourself 6.95 is all they are and i think it's a great thing to invest in these for your stash and just play around with a different shape, with a different size. We don't, they do sell out very quickly. We don't get a lot of these. Uh, and, and to have them in black makes them a lot more versatile than perhaps in other colors. Yeah. If, the, if you're working with this kind of shape for the first time. Pat and Menorca. Hey, what about these is um, napkin rings as well for your Christmas table? That would be lovely because you could put, and also because they're black, as you said, they can look really quite sophisticated because you can go really monochrome. Um, and just two of those on a long chain or a long cord as one of the, the long sort of necklaces that I like to wear my long necklaces. Mm. That would just be really effective. So you could get quite a lot of jewellery out of it or you could go statement. I like the idea of a long necklace but maybe doing chain in between, big circle, chain, circle, chain, yeah. circle, all the way down to the tummy. That'd be lovely. Love it. They're gone, they're sold out there. Now, I keep getting me wires, me wires over. Now, made in heaven these are look at them now if you were worried earlier about the single gemstones that we gave you because they didn't have a drill hole and if you're not quite ready for jewelers gemstones without having the security of a drill hole we've only got 19 of these you're gonna fall in love they're concave faceted they're absolutely striking you've just got to have them i want this in a ring i want this in a ring they're gorgeous but look, you could put the smaller ones in rings. You, these are going to be so perfect for little earring droppers. These look like a pair of earrings that my friend bought for her friend for her 40th birthday mm. from Pandora. I mean, she could have been in Thomas Sabo. She could have been in Lynx of London. These Pandora earrings were £80, one gemstone. They, they, you, you pay for the gorgeous packaging. You pay for the, mm -hmm. the label. You like to have things that have... Let's not pretend we don't like to have things from labels. But look at the quality here. We're talking about... With gemstones, like this is quality. Look at the concave fasting. Now, it costs us more to have these cut in this way. If you can imagine giving... Uh, purchasing the gemstones, as we do from the mines, taking them to the lap address and saying, right, I want plain rounds. Easy, plain round, easy, isn't it? It's a nice, easy cut. 
but when you start getting a bit more specific when you start uh, making requests like can I have them pear shaped with a concave facet that's when things start getting a little bit more hmm uh, you know only the right lapidus can do that because this is a skill like no other it's not a my machine that faceting is done by hand and you've got to appreciate the craftsmanship that goes in to everything everything from the gemstone to the jewelry you create and when you sell that jewelry on you can tell that story of course these have been hand cut by a master lapidus and let's have a look at this color just look isn't it almost rose to france amethyst mm. wouldn't you say it was wouldn't you have you seen how expensive rose de france amethyst is you are getting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven to your strand i'll count those again just in case one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that's what i've got earrings rings for prong setting definitely one single pendant in the large one perhaps what would you do debbie kishore with these they let the light in so beautifully so i don't think i'd want to cover a lot of the bottom because i'd want to let the light in they'd be lovely yeah. for head pieces because oh. you could turn them the other way couldn't you yeah um, and that would let the light in but I think I'd probably go for if I was making for myself a large one for a pendant and earrings earrings would be beautiful you could maybe have a um, two and then they'd move and the light would go through and they'd be amazing I, I think you're absolutely right let the light because it's been cut like that don't cover don't cover them up let the light beam through them so you can see all this wonderful light display of color DHZC45 is your item code absolutely gorgeous is what they are 50 carats of graduated amethyst concave cut they range from 9 to 12 millimeters and are on an 18 centimeter strand and they're just £34.95, pence, which is an incredible price tag when you think about the fact that these have all been hand faceted. Look at this Rose de France. Absolutely beautiful. Remember your extended money back guarantee. Remember the opportunity that is in front of you as well. We don't have these opportunities often. You've got the security of that drill hole at the top. If you're not ready to let go of your drill hole yet, it's there. It's like your stabilizers, isn't it? $34.95. Don't forget that uh, Michelle has made a prong set DVD to show you how to utilize prong sets and the drill holing in one simple piece of gorgeous jewelry. So be on, uh, be on the lookout for that. It'll be out any day now. £34.95 DHZ C45. Now, 17 I like this market site. Tr Traditionally, uh, Marcus like was using Victorian jewellery and it was almost sort of turned upside down with the pointy bits sticking out. If you see Victorian jewellery, often you'll have like um, an emerald with all these little black, what look like little black diamonds, but actually it's Marcusite because um, a lot of the jewellers couldn't afford to buy, uh, buy the diamonds well, for understandable reasons. So, and, and they weren't very easy to get hold of in the Victorian times at all. So they would use Marcosite as a twinkle. Use the emeralds, rubies, gemstones like that. Now, have a look. I'm going to give you skim drilled Marcosite. Now, you've got the red, but look at the glint. Now, these are Christmas personified, aren't they? Aren't they gorgeous? And then I'm going to give you the green. Now, for me, this is so festive, it hurts. Now, the reason we give you that different drilling, if you have a look at these rounds, they're not drilled straight through the center. This is the round, they're normally drilled straight through, but we're gonna skim the top of them. Now, that allows you to make a ring out of these or make a cluster out of these without showing your, your matrix. Now, if you're making a beady bead out of these, you won't see the matrix of the beady bead. NEG C37. Now, in a 10 millimeter round, these are perfect for macrame. These are grand either side of a chainmail bracelet as well. They look gorgeous clustered. I love the color. Pat's invited us right to Menorca. Well, all of us, <laughs> let's go. You were talking, Hala. Oh, you wanted her to invite you round. She has in the past. Invited. They were just saying how lovely you were, Pat, in the gallery. And Ben said, I wonder if she'd invite us round. All of us. Now, your, mar your marker site doubles. 140 carats in the green, 160, a little bit more in the deep red, but they're both 10 millimeters. You've got an amazing glint of gold. What would you do with these skim drills, Debbie? How do, we, how do you work those? You've got to be clustered. 
yeah. because of how they sit. You know, I wouldn't want to waste the fact that they had such an interesting drill hole in. I love the way they sit. Every time we do gemstones like this, um, the way they sit together and the shape that they make, I love. So I'd probably put three together and then maybe some something in between then another three so that you've got those clusters also lovely for earrings because you just get a shape that you can't usually achieve when it's drilled the other way. I totally agree with these and also have you ever tried them with stud earrings? No. Great for that because a round is really difficult in a stud yeah. earring because it's not got a flat bottom. No. <laughs> But yeah, clusters all over the place, Gorgeous. absolutely. Mm. And can you imagine these on a Christmas tree? Oh yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Or what about around the bottom of a candle? Oh, that would be lovely on a bit of memory wire. Yes, let's definitely bling up our candles. Yeah. Go and buy some candlesticks, just the usual ones, really cheap from the pound shop, and just make them look gorgeous for your Christmas table. 9.95 for the two fantastic price tag beautiful gemstones and you've got those added options now if you're doing a macrame bracelet these they'll stand proud rather than mm. sink into the shambhala which is really nice did that sound a bit foreign then when i said that 9.95 oh eight hundred six triple four six triple five don't forget to text us we love your text messages what gossip have you got what gossip have you got we need it six eight triple seven debbie and i've been away for a long time we need to know what's been going on has Lucy been behaving? <laughs> I did tune in on the uh, Halloween show during breakfast time, and that made me laugh. I thought her makeup looked amazing. Did, look, ama did you do it, Ben? Ah, oh, such a glory seeker. I did it, said Ben. <laughs> You're one of those kids that just tells lies for praise, aren't you? Yeah. I bet you're a very strange little child, aren't you? <laughs> They don't know where he came from. I can imagine him. I, my cousin's uh, son reminds me of you. His name's Silas. He's very eccentric but hilarious. Uh, now, Georgina from Oxfordshire says, Top drilled rounds are awesome in Macrame. Yes, Georgina, they are. From Oxfordshire's beautiful place, isn't it? 995 MEGC37 is your item code. Now, I'm going to give to you. Do do do. Oh, I love these. These are a bit. These are very classy. They're like dancing to jazz music. That's how classy they are. No, but really, um, really slow jazzy music. Smooth jazz. Look at these, aren't they gorgeous? Earrings, what do you say, Debbie Kershaw? I want those in a necklace with black ribbon around the back oh. that tie so that they're quite festive but still quite elegant. Very Chanel. Yeah. Have you seen that advert where the girl's got the uh, necklace all the way down the back of her back? Is and it a perfume singing? advert? Yeah. yeah, and what is it they're singing? A song that you wouldn't normally, I can't remember what song they're singing. It's a long Chanel So advert. elegant. Oh, and she walks in and there he is and she's got this long, I'd love these, on a chain with one at the bottom. Well, because often you would wear your hair up, so even if you're not someone who'd go for a big plunge back in a dress, you're going to see the detail at the back. Oh, so if you do have a bit of ribbon that you tie, you see the bow, or if you have a chain, your extended chain, just a little bit longer, just to sit nicely with what, one of these. Imagine how it catches the light. Be gorgeous. D they are very classy. They are, they? yeah. Should we go for a dance with these? <laughs> They're making me dance like it, like mothers dance. Atoms, doesn't it, Debbie? It does. Atoms. Unless you go to Dublin, <laughs> and then you give yourself some ankle breaking style dancing, is what you do. It's what she did. Kids of Kershaw didn't trip over the cat. <laughs> she was drunk coming down the stairs. OFG, P31, 200 carats, these are 8 mil, so they're going to be grand in macrame, they're going to be beautiful in earrings, they're going to be absolutely spectacular, loads and loads of chain, they're going to make great clusters, beady beads, oh, they're just gorgeous. Now remember your extended money back, right, guarantee these are super festive, so Christmassy. What's going to be our Christmas song after Lily Allen last year? What's going to happen? Mm, Do you know? Have you got no, inside gossip? Because you are know. your husband's on the music scene, isn't he? I don't know. I just think I prefer things a bit more traditional. You know, I what, like I wish you a merry Christmas. 
Isn't it? Yeah, and just like a nice soppy family Christmas song. I'm getting yeah, old, I aren't too. I? Yeah, is, that, no, is, I is that just a sign of me getting old? No, My son will be going, oh, mum. It's because you're a sentimental one, is what <laughs> yes. it is. I like that. I like a bit of Silent Night as much yeah, as Yeah, me too. And I like harmonising Silent Night. And My you know, kids won't do that with me anymore. Those Christmas songs that make you have a tear because you go, oh, yeah, and it just makes you love everyone. It's a magical, lovely time. Yeah, I love it. <sighs> OFG P31, £6.95. It's not my favourite Christmas film, but I do love watching Love Actually at Christmas. Oh, yeah. £6.95. These are so beautiful. They're gorgeous. I can't believe the price tag of these either. Please remember they're genuine gemstones. Gorgeous pyrite, once known as fool's gold. And, and if you go to Wales and go gold sieving or whatever yeah. it is you do, you buy a little nugget of it. It's like, it's, it's more than this. So you know what, you're getting a really great deal here. Uh, we are now ready for the next designer inspiration of the day. There's still some of these gorgeous gemstones available. And it's just come to me in a dream. No, it was, it was Pete. <laughs> I keep saying it came to me in a dream. Now, it's time for your designer inspiration again. We don't have a little doogee woogee. That's why we had to bring Fulcher back from the racehorses. Now, <laughs> look at what you get. I think you could play a little clip of Ben's album. We're not allowed to do that, apparently. Look at this. Oh, yes, we can play a clip of yours, Oliver. I didn't realise that was you in my ear. Oh, can we? Oh, can we? I'm going to do it tomorrow when you're not here. Do we have to have your permission? Good. Now, <laughs> in this kit, Chariorite, which I love. I bloom in love for this. I love the colour of it. I think it's you've got the, one of the most organic compositions, yeah. visual compositions, uh, out of all the, of the gemstones. Look at it, it's gorgeous. Chariorite, yeah, gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Now, this would go really nicely with these two that I, I gave you earlier. Oh. Lovely. Now, this is very nuggety and organic, this kit. Makes me do this, because it's texture. Iolite. Now these go together stunningly. Kerry, you look lovely today, very Chanel. Daddy bought you a new fur jacket. I love that. Have a look. You, got, you knew I was going to say something, Kerry. <laughs> Swatted in here looking like, I don't know, someone rich. Now, <laughs> have a look. I'm really interested in, in, um, in this gemstone anyway because of its history, its, its polarising properties. I love the fact that you get the, the most amazing effect when the light goes through these. It's fantastic. It was important to the uh, Vikings, you know, used it to guide their ships. And then a deep purple. You could do a really lovely colour gra graduation. Mm -hmm. Not graduation, because that's not even a word. Now, you're also going to get lab dry. Oh, this A hey, Mark Smith's next door. You're going to have to lock the door on him, Cass. It's going to go mad. And then you're getting... Now this strand looks like, is this Amatrine? It says purple and yellow quartz in front of me, but that looks like yeah. Amethyst is a quartz and so is citrine. I ain't saying nothing about no one. Now you're also getting, don't you love, you're so gem rich on this kit. Absolutely tons. If it is, if it is Amatrine, you're getting it for a purple quartz and yellow quartz price tag. Kindly pointed out for us by Oliver, dad of Shayla. Now, you are also getting... It's not enhanced. Oh, hello, hello. Wait a minute. We're just looking at the details. Not enhanced. Where's it from? Bolivia. The only place where you uh, get... Amatrine, read between the lines, jewelry makers, you're about to get a crazy deal. I like it when sneaky things like this happen. 
the ox is at the NEC. She'll never <laughs> notice unless she comes back, in which case someone should do something. Go and find her some chocolate. Now, you get a metre of the chain, and I love this link on these chains. And that comes within your findings pack, of which you get 118. You're also getting all your threading material, and, and you get that I love it when this happens. I love the gold beading thread I do. It's so pretty. YBG C10. C'est la vie is what we've called this, and now I've got them blinking bewitched in my Me head too. now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> should be forty-three pounds and ten pence. However, tis not that price tag today. YBG C10, C'est la vie. Sorry, it was Pip's fault. £27.95 is your kit price tag with the extended money back guarantee. Loads and loads of gemstones here. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six gemstone strands. Incredible value. 118 findings as well and your extended money back guarantee. And we take debit cards and we take credit cards. And this is going to create loads of gorgeous pieces for you to sell or give at Christmas time. Now let's... Oh, you did. God say a prayer. Yeah, Ollie did at Christmas. Should we do that jewellery maker version of it? <laughs> Let's do a Christmas walk. What would I walk like at Christmas? I would skip at Christmas. <laughs> That's my Christmas walk. <laughs> I've got those heels on that are wonky. Did I leave oh, them I love here? Love those shoes. It's got lovely shoes on. Did you like that? My Christmas <laughs> skip. You wait till it really gets near Christmas. I love it. So do I. I love it. So do I. I wish I was an elf at Christmas. I might actually be an elf at Christmas. I might be an elf. I might be an elf too. I might just be Should one. Should we sneak into Harrods dressed as elves and just sit there like we're meant to be there? Well, my friends, my friends in Dublin, they do Christmas events and they need elves and he said I could be one. I want to be an elf in Dublin. Would I get away with it? What are you saying? We must be elves in Dublin. I just, I want to be an elf. <sighs> Did you go to Cleary's like I told you to? I don't know in where Dublin. we went. Oh, it she was can't packed. remember. <laughs> she can't remember because she was too drunk. <laughs> now I love this. Now obviously you've got the capacity to make, that is, um, oh, just masses of jewellery with this and I obviously because I'm doing a designer inspiration I just tried to come up with something maybe a bit different I had absolutely loads left over did you really this. absolutely tons when you cut um, the gemstones off and you just there's just absolutely loads so you know you can do all of the things that you'd usually do with your nuggets and these are just the gemstones that you get like I love um, all these colors together they're just absolutely gorgeous so you can pretty much do anything and it's going to go together. You don't even have to really separate them if you didn't want to. Um, so what this is, it's a lariat necklace that you could make, have your flower here in your front or you could have it to the side. It's very Art Deco to the side. That's why I love this. Straight or you could the have it Deco. down your back <gasps> if you wanted like to. Like the Chanel advert. But you could be talking about Gucci or Chopard, but in that case we won't. No. <laughs> um, what the difference is that this isn't a lariat that you can pull out. You can't open it. I'm so making it look like I'm wearing it. Your chain has to be able to go round your head, which I will explain uh, when we make when we make it. So it's yeah, it's kind of a statement piece. I think that the findings that you get in this kit are really gorgeous. So I've used loads of them in really unusual ways. So I've used. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like Beetlejuice? Yeah, because juice? you've got a black dress on. It looks like that you're wearing. Is it like Beetlejuice? Where you've got a little head. I'm just going to take the head off. <laughs> oh. I was being perfectly serious then until I turned around. <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a child. No, you that can... is what it's supposed to look like. That was a very good representation. I love of it though. I think it's so pretty. Is <laughs> it so lovely on plain black though? Because you could probably wear that to a, you know, if you went to the office every day, someone who went to the office every day and wears a lot of black, that could jazz it up, couldn't it? Yes. So you wouldn't have to like go on a big night out or a big um, occasion. I think that it's something that you could wear. Now, I have actually 
added some um, rosary chain in there, but you could just leave it as plain chain if you wanted to. I just had so many gemstones. I love it. You're amazing, you are. I love this. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I was watching Downton for the first time the other day. Oh, and yeah. I didn't realise they were sort of going 1920s yeah, a bit with Yeah, they've changed their, it. Well, I love it. I Gorgeous thought, jewelry. yes, I love all of that. And the dresses that were... You're dropping the what now? He's dropping the price, that's what I'm saying. Crazy. Is it twenty seven ninety five? It was tw only twenty seven ninety five in the first instance. Oh, that's should brilliant. be forty three pounds and ten pence, and now it's just twenty four ninety five. Now remember, if you shop elsewhere and you see their jewelry kits, they're expensive. I've seen kits go for sixty pounds on another jewelry making channel. Not a jewelry making channel, another shopping channel. Sorry. And not only that, I went to a local bead fair because I do like to to walk around the bead yeah. fairs because they have lots of different things and do you know the gemstones honestly made my hair curl how much how expensive they were really and I just mean like little strands of chips and of course you know these are small businesses you know they're not going to be that be able to have offer prices that we do but the point being that I don't think I saw anything under 10 pounds and that included like single strands of small chips mm. so to get is this six strands I've forgotten six six big strands was it five strands five or, or six, six? I like two, three, four, five, six. She was right. I was wrong. Six. You get absolutely masses of gemstones in this kit. So for that, when you, when you compare, it's quite ridiculous. <laughs> it's craziness. It's quite absolute ridiculous. craziness. Now um, we're going to be making this piece. So how do I start, my love? The only thing that I've added um, to this kit because I wanted to make the piece a little bit sort of more of a statement piece because it's a designer inspiration show rather than a morning show is a bit of wire um, so you could use 0.6 or 0.8 up to you any color it's just really to make the flower okay all right so what I've done is I've taken this I'm using 0.8 because I've just basically used the spare wire that I had hanging around now you want to take a super long piece of wire enough to make your number of petals now I tend to go for um, odd numbers in my petals just because I think um, they look a bit better when you use your odd numbers not that I've ever actually counted the um, numbers of petals on flowers but I wouldn't be surprised if they were odd I think somebody said to me that they're usually always odd in nature but just because I think that I usually go with what's pleasing to the eye and I think odd numbers um, when I do it and I might add one and take it away I've always found that the odd numbers are more pleasing to my eye that's just my there, apparently there's a rule they're googling it now they could have asked Jeeves or gone to Yahoo <laughs> but they're googling yeah because I just think that when you do sort of six it tends to look a bit more like um, or four like a clover rather than a flower shape Aww. and when you've got your five it, it sort of sits nicely so obviously your jury maker is up to you but I, I tend to do five so what I did was I took my smoky quartz these are aren't they I love smoky they are. quartz I love it too um, and I decided I was going to make my flower out of smoky quartz but because all of the gemstones go together so beautifully just choose what you want to use and I used eight of my gemstones for each petal imagine if we were alive in 1920 and we and you sold something like this mm -hmm. they'd go crazy for you you'd be like the new what's his name what's the one in the night what's that 19 wolf street that one yeah, the Wolf of Wall Street, but not, yeah, Leonardo, Ooh. But uh, Apparently this rule is called... Okay. Oh, is it A what? Sidonacci. Yeah. Okay, and what is the rule, that you keep it on? No, Fidonacci. Fidonacci. <laughs> not <laughs> Sidonacci. Why is that, why is that funny to you? <laughs> what's it, I what's it called? Kerry. Kerry's really angry lately, which I like about her. <laughs> She looks very glamorous today. She looks lovely. Oh, fib and actually, like you're telling a fib. Okay, and is that the rule of having an odd number of petals then? Or yes, nature? odd numbers in petals. It's the rule of it, Fibonacci. Okay. It sounds like an Italian pasta dish, but it's not. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> oh, it was an Italian mathematician, apparently, or, and it really was. One of those funny creatures. Like Fibonacci, no, instead of Liberace. <laughs> Now I've taken my eight gemstones right to the center of my wire and the reason I do that is because I tend to make one petal and then I work to the left and the right until I get a circle so it's a lot easier um, to make your first petal in the center of your wire. Now I've cut a piece a little bit shorter than I probably usually were just because it's easy for me to get hold of for you to see um, but I would say cut more than you need. You can always add in a, a petal it's not a disaster but it's easy if you've got one continuous piece of wire. So all I'm going to do is bring that round into my petal shape and twist. 
Now again, you don't want to twist too hard. So you don't want your gemstones to rub up against each other and really press because you don't want to fracture them and you don't want to break your wire either. So just a couple of gentle twists. So as you can see, when you do it in the center of your wire, you end up with two nice long tails. So then I'll make the next petal to the left and the next petal to the right. It's just an easy way that I found to do it. So you would continue on like that, making until you've got to your desired number. And I've actually got one here just so that it's quicker for you to see. So I've made there one, two, three, four, five petals and I've just twisted and when I've got to the end you've got your two tails that have now become shorter and then I've just twisted them together, <coughs> excuse me, in the back and that's made my flower. So that's all I've added on um, to my kit. Now for the centre um, you could use a gemstone, you can use anything that you want. I had one of these um, spaces left over from another kit that I had so I thought that that went quite nicely so you just need one of those and a slightly less gauge of wire so if you've used 0 0.6 0 0.8 I would go for maybe 0 0.4 because it's quite easy to manipulate and then I'm just going to take my center sort of stamen really on and then just thread my little ends through the middle bring it down to sort of where you want it to be and round the back. Now I tend when I'm making flowers to do a lot of winding with my wire to really make my flower strong. If you're using 0 0.8 wire you don't really need to do that because it's got its structure there already. Anything higher than a 0 0.8 would probably um, be a little bit hard on your fingers and quite difficult to do. Yeah, it's not easy, so easy to manipulate, is it? No, so I mean, not point A, and also depending on the wire you're using, some wires more malleable than others, um, but I found this, this really easy. So I've got that in my centre, but again, I still thought, no, I want something um, sort of a little bit more detailed. So I've actually, just let me grab them from here. I've threaded on two, three, four, five, six, seven, again, an odd number of spacer beads, and I'm going to use those just to frame oh, my flower, I love you know, that. just to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. So there's two ways you can do this. And it hides all of the workings of the it uh, hides wire all the as wire. well. Sometimes I weave in and out of my centre because I want that sort of showing, mm. but in this case I didn't really. So Yeah, if you've got a nice weave going on, then yeah, show brilliant. it. brilliant, show it off. But if you don't really want your twists and your, your, the back of your piece showing, then this is a great way to just add sort of something a bit bigger. I did grab some of the different shaped gemstones and try and do a centre, but I decided I wanted a bit of contrast, so that's why I used um, just sort of the plain, the plain colour. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can, providing that your hole is big enough, thread your wire th right the way through and pull it into a circle, so that's easy. But not all spacer beads will do that. You won't get your wire through all spacer beads that come in the kits twice. So if not, you just do it sort of the same way as you made um, the petal, but you're going to bring it into a circle and just twist it and squeeze it. And that way you can sort of fit it over the centre and then take your wire to the back. So what you've got is quite a lot of wire going on in your back here. And I'm just going to start to make that neat. So I just twist it round. And what I tend to do when I'm making a central stamen as well is take it around the petals so that it's not going sort of off to one side. Now I'm doing this really quickly, but the other one's much neater. And then take the end back through the other side and anchor it down so that it's not moving around. So again, back round. If you get any kinks in it, just give it a pull. And then back round through the center and out the back. And pull. So you'll have a bit more time, but you can see what I mean. You've got your central point with like a little flower within a flower. So that's nice and neat like that yeah so then at the back I was going to make sort of a bale so I'm going to tie my knot point wrap rather my knot point four wire around the rest of my wires up about I don't know two centimeters and then just trim 
run your finger over it, make sure you haven't got any sharp edges because there's nothing worse than sharp edges in wire against the skin. And then I just literally made a bale. Have we got any bale making pliers? No. Well, I'll just use round. Notes. They're like gold dust. Are you mad? <laughs> of course we are. If they were there for a minute, they'd be swiped. Of course it's not. So I'd probably use my bale just making like asking pliers. for fairy dust, that. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry if you don't have any um, bale making pliers because it, it can be done. You don't always have to have every tool. It's fine. Um, so the widest part of my round nose pliers or your bale making pliers and then just sort of making a, a bale shape. Can't even steal those bail makers, I tell you. They're that hard <laughs> to get hold of. <laughs> and then I would take the lesser gauge and wrap it round here and pull it. So even when you think you've pulled it tight enough with your fingers, give it a little extra tug. I'm going quite fast, but you'll be nice and neat and precise with yours. And then decide, you know, when you think that's secure enough, and then you just want to trim off any of the excess nice and close so don't worry too much about um, any wire that you've got sticking out at the moment because what I tend to do is when I've finished my piece I go round with my fingers and um, make sure that I haven't got any sharp edges because you don't want to be scratchy when you're wearing it there's nothing you? worse than it catching on your clothes as well you know it'll you, stop you wearing it you won't wear it will you if it's not comfortable and this wants to be quite high up to the neckline as well so it's it? going to sit quite close to your skin yeah. or your clothes so you really don't want that sticking into anything if you feel you've kind of um, trimmed as far as you can go with your cutters get a nail file and go against mm. it and just or just tuck it underneath just so if you've got flush away. cutters you should be fine flush cutters will be absolutely fine at, um, at cutting sort of close enough but again just run your finger over make sure sometimes what you can't see it with your eye but you can feel it feel yeah it always feel for it um, yeah so you've got your flow out. and what I did I, I played around with with design ideas and I decided I'd quite like to make it um, into a lariat so I took just one end of my toggle clasp and attached it. So if you look on the back, so there, this is a lariat, yeah. That's a lariat, and that will pull right out. So I've, I've actually masking taped it to the bus because it was long and it, it wasn't sitting properly. Oh, okay. That, so it's got lots of. It will pull out as far as you can get it over your head. Perfect. Okay. And the reason it's not here is because we've marked all of the loads and loads and loads and loads There's of chains. There's lots of chains. So, so that's I've, perfect. So you just pull it right up to where you want it. You pull it. So you could, if you balance it correctly with the amount of gemstones you put actually on the fringe you could have it sort of hanging in a, in a weight sort of counterbalanced mm -hmm. way so there's lots of different different ways you could wear it so all I'm going to do is add this on I'm going to turn my bale round so that it sits behind my petal now the reason I did that was because when I made this necklace and then I went to wear it as a lariat this fell forward it didn't sit ah. up, okay? And the way that I got round it was that I just wired that into place on there so that that gave it the structure it needed to sit up. Give it, gives it an anchor point. An uh, anchor point so that it can sit up tall. Yeah. Um, so you can make the necklace and then you can see where you need to wire it to keep, keep that structure upright. And really you do need to sort of attach it to one of the petals so that it sits proud. Let's have a look at that on the finished piece. So I'm just going to turn it around. Can you turn it around? Now, that is quite messy because I didn't know what I was doing. It's I just not. I went with my gut and I just made as I went along. And when you do that, obviously, you might have done it a little bit more precisely if you had the design in mind first. Sometimes I work with the design in mind first, sometimes I don't. In this case, I didn't. I just went with it. I was quite inspired by the gemstones themselves. I, I, a lot of different designers do different things. They never design into it. Like Sammy said, she never designs and set rings, Pippa says, I need this because I'm going to want to do this. She always waits and sees what comes to her and she says, that's how, how it starts. And that's the des that is the beauty of being a jewellery maker designer mm. because it stretches you. Yeah. Because it's for, you know, anyone can go, right, I need four of those, three of those and exactly that and make what's in your head. When you're given something and you have to create, that's a great thing. It's yes. a great, great thing to be given that opportunity. I, I think so. And, it, and you have to, right, let's go out in the comfort zone. Right, let's to. do it. And, and, and otherwise you'll never get to do these wonderful things would you and I think that you find creative 
areas in your in your mind that you didn't know were even there. So I yeah. think that's a massive benefit of working with the kit and maybe sometimes limiting yourself to the kit. Yeah. Because you'll come up with things you wouldn't have imagined if you could have just gone and got this wire and that finding and this yeah. gemstone. It's true. So I think as well, often when you make a piece and you finished your piece and it doesn't hang correctly, don't give up, find a way. Yeah, find a way. Absolutely, I love that. And you're working through and, and, and while you're finding a way, you'll suddenly think, well that would work in this way. That as would well. work a different way. Yeah. And or maybe your necklace will end up being something you didn't want it to be to begin with and it might even be better. Yeah. So that's how I came across this. I just made wanted to make a flower with gemstones and it went from there. And it's worked. So you also get in here this gorgeous chain and you get absolutely tons of it. And it's really a nice substantial nice big o oval link but I thought the links were really pretty as well and I thought the colors were lovely and it really looked quite opulent so what I did was I measured this around my head so you really need to measure around who this is going to wear this because obviously everybody's got a different shape head haven't they you and could you adjust it could you if you were selling it Easily yeah, you could, yeah. because what you would do is just make the chain longer. So you could, what I did, I snipped it off and added a rosary. So you could just add a few more links to your rosary. Oh, okay, or take a few away if that was the case. Or take a few away, depending how long you wanted it to be. You do need quite a few gemstones on the bottom here to counterbalance the flower. Yeah. That's why I've, I've got that going on. So what I did was I measured around my head so that I knew that I needed that to go through at least that oh, long. Oh, because your head's, I thought, why is she doing it around her head? And no, it's because, because it's got to go, over, go through, of and then you pull it up and so that your flower sits That's there. That's much clever. But I never would have done that. On a lariat, true. you can often just take it off and open it. This one doesn't open. No, okay. So, so you, you have to take it over your head. So right. make sure you can at least sort of get it through. And then you want just a little bit of chain after that and then cut. So by a little bit, about an inch after that? It's, it's a design choice, it's okay. how long you want it to be. And then I just attached that to the back of my flower, which you can do with a jump ring. Let's find a jump ring. I really like these new jump rings that we've got in our fine... They're thicker somehow. They're thicker and they're really um, substantial. Now you can actually add that to your um, bale before you wrapped it if you mm. wanted to. Okay. Um, I probably would have done that if I'd have planned my design in advance but I was kind of making it up as I went along so I did it afterwards. So just attach one end of your chain onto your flower. Am I in shot yet? Spin that up with your jump ring. Close it nice and securely. If you've got any doubt about the security of it, put two on because you get enough in there so that then it will work its way round. You've attached this and it will go through there for a lariat style. Ah, I know, so, see. So, you see yeah. so you've attached that in whatever way it suits you for your design and now you're left with this. You put it through now at this point, don't you? Yeah, so you can't start to add um, fringes up here because you've got to get it over your head, so yes. you must remember that, that you need all of this. So then at the bottom part, I decided that I was going to, rather than just have chain, have a little bit of interest. So I actually made a rosary. And as you can see, these are all the different gemstones that you get in the kit. And they're all shapes and they're all colours, but they perfectly complement each other. They do. So you can choose, on my finished piece, I used all yellow gold wire. Um, findings on wire. On this I've decided to just mix some rose gold um, and you can do that with the golds I think can't you? You can mix them together. I think they all go together beautifully and I love it when you put a bit of silver in it's very um, very Bulgari isn't it? It is so I think that these days you really can mix your golds and that's made a lot of people go back to gold that just didn't wear it before. I mean, I'm, I'm the same because I used to be like right, do you like silver or do you like gold and you could never like both. For some and some, you know you just tended to go off gold because you were just sick of it. But yeah because you'd worn it all the time. No, I love it when you put them together they look gorgeous. And then you can have you can get a different feel. So if you do want to sort of make this all one colour gold, you can do, because obviously you get that colour of gold in the kit. Um, and then obviously I make up another set to show you while we're here. So that's when I decided I'd just mix some to give you options. So all I do with this, if you are a beginner and you're not used to doing your wrap loops, you can do this rosary chain just with simple loops. That can be done, but make sure that you close your loops. So all I'm going to do is wrap loop one end of my wire, 
classic mistake, and I still do it after all these years, is wrapping the loop before you've attached it to anything. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> Especially if your mind is in ten different places. It's just habit, it's isn't habit, it? It's habit. And so. then I forget when pe people do it, and they, when designers do it, and designer inspection, I go, oh, I must remember to do that. I always do that. Especially if you're, you know, and tell anything. Oh no, actually, I've just not attached oh, that to I've anything. I've done that wrong. <laughs> so make sure that you do attach it to whatever you're attaching it to. In this case, it's your chain before you wrap loop it. And there's all different ways to do wrap loops, and I think all of us, us designers probably have our own ways of doing it. Um, if the wire's malleable enough, I tend to use my fingers. And then trim off at the back. So and then you've got that really fantastic security strong, there. Isn't it, that chain? It's not going to go anywhere when you wrap loop anything. So then you just add on a gemstone onto there, and then you're going to wrap loop again. Now, again, remember to add the rest of the chain or whatever before you finish the loop. So in this case, I've already made some chain for you so that you don't have to watch me do this lots and lots of times. So I'm just going to add my chain and wrap loop that in place. So what you're really doing is you're making another chain that has gemstones in it, and you're making a very strong chain as well because you're wrapping in between. These can't come undone and come off when you're wearing it. And it also adds a really nice bit of detail and a bit of metal in between your gemstones, mm. which I always think is really nice. So you've got your long length of chain, and then you've got however long you want it to be, um, depending whether you want to have a real long necklace that comes down to your navel, or whether you want it to sit a bit higher, is, is how many gemstones you would do. So you can measure it as you're making it as you go along. Um, but make sure that you don't um, attach this any higher than the chain that goes around your head. It just get caught. It, well, you won't be able to open it, will you? You won't be able to open no. it. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the only thing to sort of be aware of. And then all I did for the bottom was take the chain that I've got left, and I made one long, I wasn't precise about this at all because I wanted it to just look really full. One long length and a couple more short lengths. So that you're making a fringe. And then I just added the other end of my toggle clasp, which I had used as my lariat pull through, I add that to the bottom of one chain, which you can do with a jump ring. Again, I know most people will know this, but if you're new to jewellery making, you want to always open your jump rings like a door away from each other. A couple of reasons for that. Um, you'll distort the metal, you'll weaken the metal if you roll it outwards. You'll never be able to get your perfect circle back again. Um, so you would always want to open your jump ring like a door and then just pop on. And it's really up to you on these fringes how much detail you want to add. Now you get lots of different sorts of um, head pins and eye pins in this kit and you get some really gorgeous ones. You get ones like little teardrops on the end, you get the ball pin, you get the thin ones. So depending what will go through your gemstone, let's see if these do, I can't remember from memory. I just trimmed them all off of their strands. Yeah, they should go through there. Put a whole section on my bead mat, and I was just quite random with it, with the colours. Yeah, so that goes on absolutely fine. And you also get the benefit of having sort of a little bit of gold at the bottom, which I think looks really pretty. Love the teardrops. And, you know, so you've still got that little bit of metal showing, which just makes it look so much um, nicer, I think, sometimes. And then again, I'm just going to wrap loop that on. Now there's really no rhyme or reason to this apart from what I thought was pleasing to the eye. So I just added these on all three of my lengths. I think I actually had more. I think I maybe had some shorter ones. So I had about five. And then just trim off any excess. And I just worked my way up choosing different, because you get sort of the choice of quite a few different findings in this kit. So maybe if I'd done a purple one, I wouldn't do a purple one next. So I'd go for a different colour gemstone and pop that on. And because they're drilled in all different places, they sort of hang in a really interesting way as well. So they hang quite nicely when you're doing that fringe effect. And do another one and work up. 
Again, wrap looping, but you know, if you're not confident with your wrap loops, you can just loop them on. As long as you make sure that you close your loops really securely, you'll be okay. And just work up. And then to add something different, I used all the findings that I hadn't used in this design. So I added the rest of the toggle clasps along the chain. I actually took these lovely little um, jump rings and I used wire to attach those. They're like little spacery jump rings. They are like I can never space. decide whether to call them spacers. I think they or are jump spacers, rings don't or you? what? Yeah. And all yeah. I did for this. Are they open or are they closed? No, they're closed, they're aren't closed. They? But I thought they looked so pretty and I wanted to add sort of a bit more of a metal effect to it. So all I did was took some 0.4, put your little um, spacer, let's call it, to the middle, held it, pinched it tight, and just twist. I like the look of the twist and I also want to make the 0.4 a little stronger. So that's two reasons for doing that. So when I've got up sort of about as high as I think I need for a loop, trim that off, and then again, I just wrap that loop on as I did with the gemstones. Pop that on there. So you're alternating between adding things on with wire and adding things on with jump rings, or whatever suits um, the component that you're, you're adding on, really. And if you haven't got any wire, you can use the thin um, head pins. They're great, and they're nice and long, too, so you can use those. So you're starting to build up these fringes. You would continue for all of the fringes that you've got, and then when you've completed them, put them together in the order that you want. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you just add them to a jump ring. Or if you want to be sort of extra careful, you could wire them on. You could wrap loop them on with some wire. So I want my shorter one on first. So imagine that's full of lovely components that I've just wrapped loop put on there. Come to me, chain. It's being fussy. There we go. And the other one. Pop that on. And the other one. And I usually like to have sort of a metal component at the bottom of my fringing um, or a larger gemstone, just because it, it tends to look... Um, really pleasing to the eye and then you just add it to your rosary so I can close this actually because I've left it open because I was that organized <laughs> I was that organized so I will then just take the bottom of my wire add my jump ring and wrap loop it in place so what I've essentially got here is chain a length of rosary chain that I've made and then more chain that I've made fringes from and I've added my gemstones. So you want to, you can keep testing this, you can keep wearing it, keep putting on to see, but you want to have enough gemstones on your end, end fringes so that it counterbalances the weight of the flower. So mm -hmm. if we look at the finished piece, I've got lots here lots of gemstones yeah because you don't want it to go it will slide yeah. otherwise so there's plenty of weight on there to counteract the weight of my gemstone flower and it also looks really really pretty so you're you can be completely in control of whether you want your fringing a bit higher up whether you want your fringing to be lower down but the necklace does slide so you can have the flower up you know by your throat or by your neck depending on how you're going to wear it offset there offset yeah offset art central. deco art deco go so, that way so it slides so as long as you've got the concept that the necklace slides and that it doesn't open anywhere and you need to get it over the top of your head that was the basic sort of principle but you can add as, as much or as little as you want I love it I, I, if you want this 1920s look and you want such super value for all your gemstones and your findings then make sure you are checking out baskets we've got quite a few unchecked baskets for this one at 24.95 you're getting super value now I will be back with a third designer inspiration <laughs> after this Our commitment here at Jewelry Maker is to provide you with genuine gemstones. Many places might not be able to do that, but we want to guarantee it. So how do we do it? We go to the laboratories and we get tests. We have our own in-house gemologists that can guarantee that when we say genuine gemstones, that's exactly what you're getting.
the latest edition of the Lure Book is now available. This highly regarded gemstone encyclopedia features over 1,300 pages full of facts and knowledge. Discover the places, the people and the stories behind every gemstone. To get your hands on a copy, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Insert the reamer into the hole of the pearl and move it backwards and forwards with a slight twisting motion. The drill shape of the reamer will remove the pearl material from the hole as you enlarge it. Work until the hole is as large as you need for the threading material you're using. Hello and welcome back. I've got some blanks coming up for you in a bit. We've got another designer inspiration coming up for you in a bit. I love it. What should we start with, though? Something a bit snazzy. Do you love blue tiger's eye? In ovals, it's never seen. They're always in rounds, aren't they? You've got to have these. They're gorgeous. I want to put these in earrings and a ring for absolute sure. You've only seen these once before. Look at the electric blue. I love it. I love this colour. I do. I don't know why, but it reminds me of Noel Fielding, who I'm massively in love with. <laughs> Are you massively in love with Noel Fielding? I don't know who that is. Get a picture of Noel Fielding, because I know that you're fancying. Who is he? He's the one from um, Mighty Boosh. He's got the dark hair as a comedian. Hilarious, really oh, no, funny. I don't know who you mean. I need Where's a picture. Crazy stuff. I did a what, sorry? You do look like Howard Moon. It's true. Yeah, you should watch the Mighty Boosh. It's funny. Here's, here he is. That's what he looks like. Do you love him? Oh, love yeah. Him. He's got I think that. he's going to be my husband. <laughs> and he's put a bit of weight on, which makes me like him even more. Now, have a look at these. Because it's that, it's that quirky colour, I think, is what it is. It's because he's got a huge personality. I just love these electric flashes of blue. I think they're funky. I, I, I want to watch them, I want to look at these, I just think they're great. Look at that, some of these are, are bluer than others and I just think when they move, when the light hits them and you get from, it's like a blue black, isn't it? Oh, I love them. And to have a tiger's eye in an oval isn't an everyday thing, Debbie, is it? I don't think I've ever seen one in an oval. I didn't know you could get blue tiger's eye, that's lovely. That, Lush. Yeah. And again, it's that colour blue that you know, you don't have to be even a person who loves blue because it's quite neutral, isn't it? So I think that'll probably go with quite a lot of skin tones. And, and do you know something? These are quite mesmerising. When you're looking at these and the chatoyancy yeah. and the blue and the black and the and the what is this sort of element? You know, you sort of look at it and thinking, wow. I mean, the, the, the way that it's, it's sort of striped or it's got these wonderful, well, almost like malachite stripes in a way, but malachite stripes of chatoyancy in blue. So Lovely. first of all, when I look at this, I was confused. What, what, what is this? It's amazing. And, and because I don't think that a conventional shape for tiger's eye is an oval, I think it's even more fascinating. Think about putting these, ah, oh, rosary link bracelet, gorgeous. I want to look at these. I want this to be selfish jewellery. <laughs> I want to look at it. 
They're only six ninety five. You must have them if you love jewelry. If you love if jewelry making, actually, if you love tiger's eye. Uh, do you know what? This is my favourite colour tiger's eye. I love it. I love it. Six ninety five. It's such an affordable price tag, isn't it? Can you get a drive through meal for that? F O G P zero two. I don't know. I don't think you can. Not if you take my children with you. We eat like a <laughs> pair of adults. They never stop. Yesterday, I did take them to that aforementioned drive-through, and mm. Mia had a certain meal plus a filet of fish. Really? She, honestly, the kid doesn't stop eating. Have you seen how skinny she is? Six ninety-five. Uh, loads of you there. It's lovely to have you. Ha have you all? Now we're going to pop that there. We got a text message. Oh, I thought you said we got a text. Who said number ten? Sounds a bit like got a text. <laughs> <laughs> the rule is causing kerfuffles. Te send us a text, will you? 60777. Now, oh, now you're going to love this. You're going to really... Oh, look how long this is natural turquoise. It's so long. <gasps> I love this. It's only been on once before. You're going to have to be very quick. Most of them sold out. We've only got a few of these left. Natural turquoise. And look at it. Look at the fact that these are faceted. They're in rondelles. And you can use ever such a tiny amount of these if you want because they are a colour statement. I love this cool turquoise. Turquoise fan, Deborah? Love it. Can't you tell natural turquoise from other things that people pretend are turquoise? Absolutely. <laughs> look at that colour. You just can't, you can't pretend because I think some people don't know better. But look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can see the matrix in it. It's yeah. got a softness but a power as well. Beautiful. You can see why the Egyptians loved mm. this gemstone. And we've only got 14 of these. It's last chance. It's unchecked basket quantities. Now, what I love is that they're faceted, and we don't see too many turquoise pieces that are faceted because, it, oh, as you know, it's a soft gem, so it's quite hard to facet it in that way and keep those facets wonderfully. Now, a way of getting around to that is by using reconstituted turquoise, mm. which is wonderful, but this is 100% natural at the ground. No reconstitution uh, with this strand whatsoever. And it's December's birth gemstone. Can mm. you believe it's December next it's month? Mine. <gasps> is it your birth gemstone? It is, yeah, that's You've got like some it. crackers, you uh -huh. have. Yeah. T turquoise, tanzanite. Yeah. You've got uh, zircon as well. So you love it. You've got a natural affinity with this gemstone already. Always loved it, yeah. It's, it's, this, this somehow is softer. We'll go really nicely with white, gold, silver. You know, I, I, rose gold. I, mean, I, I think that there are few limits when it comes to turquoise. Loads of myth and legend behind turquoise as well. It's got a big spiritual connection. It's the 11th wedding anniversary gemstone as well. We're down to single figures. You're going to have to be really quick. FJR, have a look at what you've got. FJR U90 is your item code. It's said to bring you a sense of harmony and well-being. Ooh. We all like, we'd all like a bit of harmony, wouldn't we, and well-being. Yep. That's, that's what we want in life, isn't it? Harmony. Nine chances left. All yours. Now, remember, this is natural turquoise. I remember when I launched turquoise for you here at Jewelry Maker with Ed producing me. £80 it was. Look at this. 40, look how long this trend is. It's such a wonderful price tag. We've only got eight left. Uh, please make sure you are checking out baskets because I can't promise you you're going to get this strand if you don't. Now, by just using a tiny section of these, you're going to make a big impact in your jewellery. You have got a 40 centimetre tassel gems of distinction strand. Down to the last seven, you've got to be quick. FJRU90 is your item code. 80 carats. I've got unchecked baskets. If everybody checks out their baskets, then this looks like it will sell out today. FJR United, remember you've got the extended money back guarantee. If you're making that special birth gemstone piece, this is your strand. Seven chances, now down to six. You've got to check out, I reckon that will sell out today. Woo! Black onyx. I love a black onyx. I always say, if we were playing gemstone family fortune and I said name a hundred ask a hundred people to name a black gemstone black onyx would be the top it's the one on the tip of the tongue it's the one that so many of the jewelers use it Cartier uses it go to, uh, Gaultier uh, Chopard I meant to say in yeah. Gucci and it came out Gaultier that's what he did uh, Chopard Gucci 
use this gemstone Prada use mm. this gemstone uh, black onyx has got this deep intensity of color uh, uh, people ask all the time don't they Debbie what's the difference between agate and onyx well, I get you sometimes see some stripes in, you sometimes might catch a whisper of clarity in. Onyx is that perfect solid, solid, solid colour. It's very shiny like a billiard mm. ball, isn't it? I love it and it, you're right, it's in a lot of um, the collections. Um, there is one designer who has made just a stretchy bracelet with the onyx on and also they use a lot of black spinel as well and Masabo. yeah yeah and these bracelets are <laughs> really expensive because they do use it yeah. because they're on elastic you know and they're still you know double figure bracelets and then Thanks, you, it. you might get sort of one charm on sort of like a lobster clasp and it's just one gemstone it looks gorgeous but you know easily made easily made looks gorgeous but people don't make it themselves so they they don't you know, know. It, they, it's still that valuable you know because you're a jewelry maker you can offer these better prices you can offer the same gemstones perhaps your own inspiration of design on there as well these could be charms these could be earrings these could be they could be whatever you want them to be and that's the glory of jewelry making isn't it black onyx sdru 15 115 carats and they're only eight pounds and 95 pence now the generic price tag for black onyx strands like this is about 12.95 so you're getting super value here do think about multi-buying if you're going to be using a lot of black gemstones in do you know i i, I do think so many of it is going down you're a little rascal you are to six pounds and 95 pence we do go through those days right now it's not summer anymore but it's still bright outside uh, the blacks are coming out the wardrobe the blacks are coming out aren't they 6.95 uh, think about how elegant this will look with silver, gold, hmm. rose gold. It doesn't matter what colour you use in your metals with this, does it? It's totally flexible. And I just think, you know, even a necklace um, with this and maybe some silver wire wrapped round with a white shirt, it's all about the accessories. Hmm. And I really do think that you can make some statement pieces, but because it's black, it's going to come out time and time again. When you said necklace then, hmm. I just thought, is it because it's neck lacing? We're lacing up our neck, neck, neck. neck. That's why they call it a neck lace. Because so it's about lace, isn't it? And pronounced that way in some places. My, my friend says neck lace, and she's from Derbyshire. It's just come to me. Mm. These moments happen. What do you think? Let us know. Let us know. Where does the word neck lace come from? Necklace. Uh, now, which one? I'm so glad you said number six, so I was going to pick number six up anyway, because I love these. It's like, nah, we're going to do what I want. Uh, these are lush. Now, you were talking about Thomas Sabo earlier. I've been talking about Links of London mm -hmm. and Pandora. I'm going to give you some charms which are going to look amazing on your charm bracelets. Have a look at these. I love them. Now, my friend bought a crown charm, and it cost her £62. Yeah. And it was about this much metal. Have a look at the elements that you get lush copper elements and silver real silver and copper i love them i think they're fantastic now you get uh, the side view there and the front on view and you can see these have got a really nice substantial drill hole to them but you can see these have got the most amazing i don't know why i thought of a jester's hat where the uh, where it's it's do you know what i mean the sections are like that in the yeah i don't know why it made me think of it that you know the texture but Debbie, these are fantastic. They're so expensive in charm shops, aren't they? God, you could do so much with that. I mean, you could go down this sort of charm. If you're making to sell, you've got to make things you know people like. So mm. make it a charm, put it on a, a black spinel or a black onyx bracelet or a um, chain. But you know what you could also do? They could be quite um, steampunkish in the right design. Yes. Quite vintage in the right design. I think that they're quite chameleon-like. They could really take on whatever you wanted to put them in, really. They'd be wonderful in earrings, and again, like we were saying about 1920s, you could put them, and then loads of tassels of chain. That'd be gorgeous. Yeah. I, I, I just think these sorts of things make your jewellery look so much more professional, Debbie, because they you wouldn't ever think, oh, a jewellery maker made that. You think, oh, where did you buy those? Because they have got something within them, within the design, that you do see out there in the high street yeah. jewellers and the high end jewellers. You do, and and that would take the mind to oh they, well, they look expensive you've seen the earrings they look expensive you know they look mm. so professional and also if you're giving your friends uh, as gifts the jewelry that you have made i think they're going to be absolutely shocked that you made them because of the elements like this because they look so professional and it makes your jewelry look expensive and don't we want to look expensive we do don't we we're going to give you all five a fantastic price tag now you've seen these once before i believe is that right liam twice 
third time, so perhaps the last time, in fact. Should be price tag of 995. We're being cheeky, though. A up. You're getting these for a brilliant price tag. Remember, these are copper and sterling silver. 695. You've got to get them. You get five for 695. Incredible value, Maxine, Patricia, Glenda, Elizabeth, and David, Julia. Make sure you're checking out baskets. Julia, Nottinghamshire, you've got yours. Uh, I, and now I see Anne in Carmarthenshire, Sheila in Cambridge. Uh, VBDL24, Pavi, you've joined us. Hello to Swether. Mary, you've joined us. Glenda's joined us. It's great to see you. I love this value. It's super, isn't it? I love the fact that you're getting five. Multi buy these. They make the perfect Christmas gifts. We're going to give you some cool stamps, which I'm going to make, Debbie Kershaw. Blank, sorry. <laughs> and I've got number stamps. Number stamps. Mm -hmm. Number stamps. <laughs> Coming up for you soon as well. Should we do the blankety blanks? Blankety blanks now, or not yet? Not yet, he says. Be patient. Number th 13. I got it. I need these. Debbie Kershaw, you might already have them. Have you seen this? I can't see what's in it. Box of textured blanks. <gasps> got those, I think, when I see a close up. You got these? Got them. Oh, they're gorgeous. Right, what made you get these? What made you buy them? Do you know that they, I, well, I can't guarantee it because everyone's different, but when I saw them on um, telly and then I got them home, they were much bigger than I thought they were. They looked smaller on telly. So really? I was even more pleased. <laughs> um, they're just lovely to add in, like I was saying earlier um, about the other ones that we had, where that you can do your chains and hang them off and then just have gemstones. It gives a real designer feel and they're different. And I like different components in my jewelry. I want my jewelry to look different. And I think that these, look at that, and they're all different shapes. You can do loads with them. These have got stars on them. Some have got two holes, them. if I remember rightly. Some have got one. I love them. So look, that you can do loads with those. Aren't they amazing? I love, I just think a simple bracelet, right, and some black cord with star. Yeah. Well, that, that's a brilliant Christmas present. Right, let me show you that. Now, because, now remember, if you're brand new to jewellery making, you'll get loads of free goodies with the order, including a tutorial DVD. Have a look. We're, by the way, we're giving you a price slash on this. So all you do is put cord there, cord there, bracelet, easy. And how many Christmas presents can you make like that? Now, these are going to be brilliant to make impressions with if you've got your moulding compound as well. I think I would be inclined to go for the heart. And I think I would be inclined to make a bracelet out of that heart like that. How many of each design do I get then, Liam? Just black cord, tie it up, gorgeous. Ten of each design, and I get ten designs all together, yeah? Is that correct now? Twenty different designs. You get loads. Two hundred pieces all together. You have to have this. I love that we're doing this. I love it. Which ones are my favourites? I can't decide. It's like trying to find your favourite chocolate, isn't it? And you're like, oh, which one? If I'm only allowed <laughs> one, well, I don't know which one it is. Thirty-four ninety-five is your previous price tag. Price has always been a brand new lowest ever, is what I'm about to give to you. We've only got limited amounts of these. Oh, where's it going? Look at what you've got, absolutely stacked. You've got to grab this. Debbie Kershaw's not going to be happy. Oh, <laughs> now, you did invest in these. <laughs> have you made loads and loads of jewellery out of them? I have, know. and you know, they're not just... Just because some of them have, I think, or maybe all of them have got two holes in, they don't have to just be connectors. You know, I made quite a few single-drop pendants, and then I just dropped um, a gemstone from it. Oh, So lovely. earrings, yeah. pendants, bracelet charms. I think I made a charm bracelet with um, a few of them. So they can be connectors which is but they're, they're versatile and also it would take quite a bit to get that level of texture onto metal you'd probably need a rolling mill which is a very expensive piece of kit well some of them have got stars on so that would take forever yeah. if everyone checks out then they've sold out you've got to be quick in checking out i've got lissa in hertfordshire and jane in hertfordshire got me half a crew here uh, uh alex you've got yours pamela you've got yours susan you've got yours hillier you've got your sweater you've got yours uh, my goodness me not everyone's gonna get these you've got to check out as quickly as you can deborah in um, pennsylvania you've got yours jury maker and county down you've got yours you must check out or these are gonna go we've only got three left Woo! Now, 
I promised you another designer inspiration, didn't I? That's what we're going to do right now. Now you're going to love this. We're going to do some letter stamping. I'll take me blanks over there, shall I? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. You won't, you won't get that piece of popcorn that was left on there. No. <laughs> I went to see the Babadook. Oh, don't go see it. Have you seen it, Ben? No. Don't see it. So scary. What is it? It's a horror film in the cinema. Oh. oh. It's so scary, What's Babadook. It about? The Babadook, duck, duck. No, I couldn't sleep. I didn't like it. It was really good, but really scary. What's it? Do you like scary films? I love horror films. Then go and see it. No, but I like proper suspense horror films, not just load of blood and guts horror films. No, Don't like you those. need to see it. Oh, really? Suspense yes. horror film, proper yes. horror film. Ooh, OK. It's not like the, not like Scream. No, I don't it's like those silly. sorts. It's no. It's in your head. Oh, that's what I like. It's in your head, Deborah. Oh, it got to my head. <laughs> Go and see it, Ben. You'd like it. OK. Are you scared, Easy? No, you scared, I'm Easy, Ben. You won't find this funny because it's not like Scream where you mm. can just go, don't be stupid Drew Barrymore. <laughs> don't put that popcorn on there. Don't talk to him like that on the phone. Now, anyway, we won't talk about the Babadook ever again. Have a look. You've got these wonderful blanks and I love the colour of these. They're a fabulous colour. I actually quite like the idea of a ring. And you can put them either way up, couldn't you? You get mm. ten of those. Now, are you in love with these feathers or are you in love with these feathers? Totally gorgeous, aren't they? I knew you'd love them. Have a look at these. Feather findings. You get two of those. I love them and you will too. Then you are getting gorgeous rose gold findings. You're getting wire this time as well. So you're getting 0.6 wire and 0.4 wire. Now your 0.6 wire is perfect in copper for making your earring findings. If, you, yeah. if you've got a specific design in mind, you want to make a really gorgeous earring findings, then use your 0.6. This is great for rosary linking, which we've seen you yeah. do with Debbie today. Uh, then you've got your 0.4. This is your wire wrapping wire. Uh, it's also great for going through gemstones like pearls and doing the tiara twist, doing the tree of life, things like that. And, and to have the two contrasting colors is perfect for your weaves. Now I'm going to give you your beading materials as well. You get the gold beading thread, you get your monofilament and your elastic, but let me show you because you're getting yellow opal in this kit and I love it. Look at this colour. Now I'm a, I'm, I always think of lemon meringue pie when I see this and then it makes me want to go and eat pudding, which is a good <laughs> thing. Don't forget you've got dessert coming up with Mark and Ed today. You've got the black agate as well. all drops and then you have got like the teeth here of white ma magnesite yellow opal that lemon marais marai lemon meringue pie but i made it all one word that marai that's what drunks do now you are also getting these gorgeous head pins i love these little flowers i think they're <coughs> fantastic now where else can you get quirky head pins it's usually quite sort of niche places and you usually sort of buy them by the ten and they cost a fortune because they're different. Oh yeah, you're right. It is like those little quirky shops. You know like the online shops where people do handmade things, that's mm. often where you get those oh, and you buy yeah. a few because they're different but it's quite an expensive way of doing it if you do it like that. Yeah, I can imagine. I love going on that website though. Yeah. It's really interesting, isn't it? So you've got your trio of gemstones, you've got the blankly blanks, you've got two wonderful pewter feathers which I love, the gold on pewter. ZSG C98. Honey to the bee, he's been listening. Now, first of all, we had Sailor V, and now it's Honey to the bee, baby, you and me. That was Billy, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Oh, God. 47 pounds and 45 pounds. I'm having a word with Pip. Ring Pip, tell him I'm... Tell him I'm not happy that I've got 80s tunes in my head. £47 and 45 pence is not your price tag today. We're going to give you a super value because you're shopping during the live show price tag. 
There's two ways in which you can shop with us on the phone on 0800 644 or online on <coughs> w.dreamaker.com. $24.95, the best price of all of the kits so far today. With the blanks, we're going to show you how to use those in a second. Marguerite, you've got yours. Janet and Betty, sorry, Margaret. I, for some reason, I thought it said Marguerite. Honey to the bee is what Pip's called this. I am cross with him for putting these songs <laughs> in my head. Because we want to. That's good for oh. next, isn't it? If that's tomorrow, then he's in trubs. Let's go over to that gorgeous girl and have a look at the... Oh, I'm going to take my new blankety blanks with me. Do you remember blankety blank? Blankety blank? I used to blankety love that. Blankety blank. What's his name? Les Dawson, wasn't it? Well, wasn't it Terry Wogan? Yes, it was originally the god that is Terry Wogan. I love Terry My Wogan. other husband. <laughs> I love him, he's so good. I love him. You can't have him, he's mine. No, we could share him. OK, we'll share him. He'd be like the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Wogan. Love that. He'd be hilarious. He would be he? hilarious. Such a good professional broadcaster, yeah. isn't he? Lovely. Yeah, but hilariously funny. He is. Don't make him like that no more, do they? No. Now, have a look at this. I love it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort of think if this is not tribal. What era are we going with? It's kind of uh, Mad Maxy. Yeah. Tina Turner in Mad Max, which I love. It's just really to show you again something different that you could do with the blanks and how when you texture them they can look completely different and often when you buy um, there's a lot of this I was looking in the in the shopping center there's quite a lot of this sort of design with different shaped metal all sort of connected together in big statement pieces um, I did start off it making even this even bigger I used all of the blanks and there were probably five across the top but then I just thought no not everyone would probably wear that so I went for smaller and used six and then you've got some left to do earrings or whatever as I've well. seen this in the gladiator sandals I've seen it and they're really expensive so you've got a really nice pair of leather sandals mm -hmm. leather, leather flip-flops you could put this around the ankle this part oh yeah it looks gorgeous. amazing yeah. it's so expensive this could be a bit of a gladiator-esque kind of look actually think, couldn't it yeah yeah it's, it's a bit spartacus yeah <laughs> i'm spartacus i love that book do you howard fast very good yeah i love it you read that mikey you read, i am a reader i've just finished um what's it blinking called history of loneliness oh about the irish priests it's good it was you can borrow it off me if you want finished it now you couldn't put it down it's from the same guy who wrote the boy in the striped pajamas Oh, that's sad. It's really sad. And you know when you're reading it, you think, they're going to make a movie out of this. And it, it was, it's wonderful, but sad and disturbing. It's actually very good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's very good, but very... Oh, and it kind of gets you like that, this book. I really liked it, because you get angry, you get sad, you get it's everything good. you want. Yeah, read it, read it. There we go. We should do a jewelry maker book club, is what we should do. That's what we should do. We should indeed. What did you just finish reading? I haven't read anything for ages because I've been moving house. Oh, OK, I'll let you off. But I, I download them onto my um, app and then I read them through there. And I was the person oh. who said I'd never do that, that I like the feel of Me real too, books. Me too, yeah. And now I do it. I audio book a lot. Do you? Mm, audible. I'm in the car for four hours a day. Yeah, true. It's that or eat sweets. <laughs> Oh, well, and I do both of them. I know which I? I prefer. The archer's an audible. That's what I do. All the archers getting gripping right now. <laughs> now, let's kick off. OK. Um, what I did was I started off with the main part of the necklace being the blanks. So you need six blanks and you need to arrange them as to your design. So I had a, a, a really good few minutes where I shuffled them about and I decided what I decided was pleasing to my eye. And the main thing that you have to do with these blanks is all you have to do, in fact, is texture them and make holes in them and connect them. So you have to be quite precise when laying out your blanks because you want to make the holes in the right place. Now, you have got the opportunity here, if you wanted to, if you preferred, you could add a gemstone in between each one of these blanks that would be absolutely fine I decided because we were doing a metal texture show I'd, I'd just keep keep it as metal and let's do something different now you need to decide how you're going to connect these this is the main thing and you need to plan that out before you start because if you're making random holes in the wrong places it's not going to fit together so what I started off with this is just a permanent marker don't worry too much about if you don't get the holes in the right place and the marker pen shows later it will come off with a little bit of nail varnish remover. yeah so it isn't really permanent it's not they really. lied <laughs> so all you need to do is just mark on your blank where 
your holes need to You're be. doing this by eye, not by measurement. Is that a usual thing? This is exactly how I make jewellery. Good, thank you. I'm glad. But I know people like Sammy won't approve of that because <laughs> she's extra wonderfully, beautifully precise. Um, she also kills cockerels. Why? She got annoyed with her cockerel, so she killed him and ate him. It's true. She's I said so that with you. like, and she does this. So I didn't mean to because I love her and it does make me laugh. Oh. Not that, that doesn't make me laugh, but you know. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> ah, bah, bah, bah. I'd oh, kill it and eat it. Oh, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I just yeah. had him in my garden. Would you? Do you want chickens? I'd love chickens. Would you? Mm -hmm. Price of the kit's going down. 19.95 yes yes it's under 20 pounds that never pounds. happens in the mid show it's very got good three kits today it's all good so all i'm doing is i'm making i'm working out where i need to join my blanks and i'm making little dots so i've also got to join the middle ones as well and they've got to join to each other so that they are not going to open and fall apart so make Obviously, I'm being quick because I'm on live telly, but I was more precise when I did this at home. But I know where the holes are going to go. And then once you have decided where you're going to make your holes, you then have to punch your holes out. So you can choose whether you want to use your drill or whether you want to use um, your hole punch. Now, you've seen me punch holes, so I'm sure you don't need to see me punch lots of different holes, but I'll show you it made up so that you can get an idea. Now, what I've done with this is I have made the holes first before I textured the metal for the reasons that I said earlier, that especially copper will harden incredibly quickly when you start to hammer it. And then you won't be able to make the holes as easily, will you? No. So I've made the holes first because that's the, the important thing to do. And then I textured the metal. Now, I think that this is a lovely texture and that literally is just the round end of the hammer that we sold earlier. So I'm just going to show you how I textured those. So let me grab my block and my hammer. So these, this is the same block and hammer that we sold earlier, exactly the same stuff. So imagine that I've made my, my holes in these. Now you do have two sides to these blanks. One's more of a high shine. Now you might choose to keep your piece high shine. If you don't, I'm gonna show you a way around that in a minute. Now all I've done is use the round end of my hammer and I've just hammered around till I've got the effect that I wanted. Now I didn't go for my edges this time, I didn't soften my edges, I just kept them quite straight just for a change. Now you might decide, let's do just half of it, to just do half of the texture, which I think looks quite effective. I like that. So you could do half and half, you can do round the outside, you can do a little circle in the middle. It's also incredibly good for underlining stamping. You can Ooh. underline stamping with a bit of texture. That's quite oh, a nice way to do it. Um, in my case, I just hammered all over. You just got totally hammered. I got rid of some aggression. I'm not talking about the ankle again. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it funny how Guinness tastes different in Ireland? Yeah, it's better, isn't it? It's nicer. I don't yeah. like it full stop, but I could actually take a sip in Ireland. Oh, you should have okay. put a bit of black currant in it. You'd have been away. Oh. Fill in, though, isn't it? Yeah, I just had a sip. I didn't get excited. Have some Irish stew? No, because... What did I have? Oh, you're a blue. How did it go pudding. down? I, you had what? Lots of pudding. How did it go down being a vegetarian? Fine, because we went to my friends for dinner and my friend's husband made me a lovely dinner that was vegetarian. I want you to go to the restaurant. No, you want me to come to the restaurant where you're going to put like a some big thing on that. No. Have you, have you always been a vegetarian? Since I was 16 and that is a long time. You're, what about for your children? Do you make them meat? No, it's up to them what they do. So but you won't eat. make it for them? I do make it, I've only just in the last five years or so, I, can, I, I can't fiddle with it, but I can, you know. What about if you smell bacon, what happens to you? Nothing. <laughs> she My daughter <laughs> was a vegetarian and it took me a long time to get to grips with it. A lot, and in the end she was just doing it to prove a point. I like respect, people. Yeah. absolutely. A lot of people go through those phases, don't they? But it's a life choice for me that I've, you know, I'm, I'm 46 this time. I'm not ashamed to say how old I am. And I've been vegetarian since I was 16. Well, I eat a bit of fish here and there if I have to. So it's a long time. If I, you I have can't remember to, what, it what you're like. feeling like I need a bit of the protein. If I, yeah, if I feel a bit of protein on my health, I sometimes have a bit of white fish. But that's only a recent thing. I suppose you've got clean insides now. I don't know. There's plenty of chocolate in there. <laughs> 
Uma Thurman only eats raw things. Do you know that? She no. never cooks anything. Really? Yeah. Why? Because she said, because actually when you cook things, it does kill off the um, Your nutrients, goodness. the goodness. Yeah, but you can steam things. And that's well, she doesn't do that. She'll chew on some raw broccoli. She'll maybe, you know, I don't know if she eats meat or whatever, but no, nothing is, nothing is cooked. Life's she looks living. good for it. Life's for living. Yeah. <laughs> I say eat that steak. Ew. You don't say that. Lovely steak. You're missing out. You Lovely are. steak. Um, this is... <laughs> I was hungry, I'm not anymore. Um, oh, this is my, I am. my text. Next steak. Someone put that in front of me. I'd eat ten of them. It's yuck. <laughs> this is my textured blank. Now I've got a choice here of whether I want to high shine it up, which I just do with a polishing cloth. So this is just a polishing cloth um, that you can just get to clean your jewellery with or a jeweller's one. Um, and if you just give it a rub, you can bring, look at that lovely up to a high shine if you decided which i did that i actually wanted to make it matte just to show how you, you can either use wire wool or if you've got a steel brush that you've got from your pmc you can use that and just give it a brush and you know those lovely blanks we had before we had the stars and that they're brushed and it's just <coughs> it tones it tones down the shine so you've actually got um options on the texture and the and the shine that you want whether you want it to be brushed or or not so that's all i did for my texture i didn't do anything more than that and i kept the texture the same on every single blank and then i'll just move this out of the way i literally just put together the blanks with jump rings and sometimes you may need a bigger jump ring just because you've made your hole in, into your blank a little bit too far. If that's the case, you've got the wire you need to do it. Just take your 0 0.6, take it round the widest part of your um, round nose pliers a couple of times. Take it off cut it through with the um, flush cutters and then you've made bigger jump rings so you might do easy. it's very easy uh, I don't tend to make a lot of my own jump rings because I just think it's time consuming and for what you can get them for there's no point but in a case like this I'm unless not, you're making like a chain mail unless something. you're doing yeah. chain mail and you're doing a specialized thing but with this I think I got the jump rings and the kit through every single one and there was one hole that I just made slightly too far into the blank um, so I just needed a slightly larger jump ring, so I just made it out of the wire. Oh, see, that's the thing, isn't it? You can. So that's yeah. a tip. If you get to the last one and think, I cannot get this on, just because you've maybe made your hole slightly um, too far in, just make one. These, these are two I made. No, I've actually undone those. And then um, I just literally connected it together with the jump rings so that I ended up with my sort of Roman-y feel I love that. of pendant. And then on the, the bottom, I added um, my dangle, which literally is the feather, which this is gorgeous. I mean, you could make just earrings out of this feather. I love that you? feather. You could uh, liver a soul for it, could you? As well, yeah, you I can't see to. why not. Yeah, because you could make sort of give it a bit of a different look then, couldn't you? And then maybe brush it off some wire wool so it stayed mm -hmm. in. It's already been textured because it's... Oh, yeah, it has with the grooves, yeah. Uh, around those pliers. So what I did with this was I just made a wrap loop on the end of a length of wire. I added my feather on so that it was like a little charm and I just wrap loop that to the end of my wire. So that's sort of the bottom and I think as well when you're doing something this shape it's quite nice for the bottom to come to a point it's quite pleasing to the eye and that's why I did the feather to the bottom and then I just added one gemstone and a spacer bead you get these lovely spacer beads in with your kit and another gemstone and I just wrap loop that onto the bottom hole of my pendant So that you've now got sort of the main part of your necklace. Just hold on to that with your pliers and wrap it round. Okay, so that's ready now to add on to the bottom of the rest of your blanks. So I'm going to pull that round. I'm going to take another set of pliers and just open that jump ring. 
like so and connect it on. Make sure that you, when you're connecting them together that you get them facing the right way because it's quite annoying when you add it together and there's one facing the wrong way, it's gone backwards. But it's easily undone and just put back on again. Close your jump rings nice and securely because they are holding the whole thing together. So again, I'm just opening that like a door. Pop it in. Close it again. So that's the main part of your necklace, that's done. And you might decide that you just wanted to add some chain either side. What I did was I took a length of wire and actually wired on some gemstones. So I'll show you how I did that, that's one side. So I took a length of the 0.6. You want to take um, double what you need because you're going to string on and then you're going to come back on yourself and wrap round. So take double the length of wire that you need for the length of your necklace. One end you're going to wrap loop onto your stamping blanks. And I quite like working with wire for necklace lengths rather than beading thread because you can manipulate it to sit exactly as you want it to sit which in some cases that really works for the design and it also it's super strong as well. So nice neat wrap loop there. And then what I did was I did a little black and yellow combination. So I did a yellow opal and then a black. What are these? Black agate. Black agate, and they're gorgeous. Black agate. Look at all the little, like mottled. They've got lovely, yeah, lovely effect. That's why mm. I didn't know what they were. Tortoise shell. That looks like there. Look. You get all. I know they're all different. I love mm. that when the gemstones are all different. Black and yellow. I love together. Like bumblebees. There's yeah, a like, song. Black and yellow. And I didn't. I haven't put the um, white gemstones in because I use those separately in sort of the earrings and the bracelet. But of course, you could mix all three if you wanted to. And I just did three of each colour. And then a spacer and you just continue in that fashion until you've got the length that you require for your necklace so I'll do one more and then a spacer so I worked out I had enough room to do four spaces on each side and then I was going to add some chain to finish off so that I didn't use all my gemstones because I think sometimes when it's at the back of your neck you can add a bit of chain can't you and then you're mm. not you, you know you're not seeing that bit so your gemstones and you get quite a lot so you could make a, a, there was easily enough to make oh, quite a few more pieces and then I'm just going to wrap loop on the end and add the clasp of my choice. So I actually chose um, these lovely ones that you get the in. The ribbon end. Yeah, yeah and I just took the ribbon end off so that I just added that as a clasp. So you want to, like we were saying earlier, add it before you wrap loop. And you're supposed to have a big huge tail hanging down at least as long as your beaded length. And then all I'm going to do by beaded length, you mean the three that you've put on there, yeah? Yeah. All I'm going to do now is wrap around. I'm going to try and keep it still, but you need to pick it up really for this. Just wrap all the way around. And I did this to really add some structure and to also just add some interest. I wanted it to look organic. I wanted to see some wire showing because I love copper. And you just get absolutely tons of these. Even the findings are the same colour. This is a really lovely kit. And for the price as well, Deborah, nineteen ninety-five. I've got Eleanor looks on place. Got two in her basket. Uh, do make sure you are checking out. I have got Mar uh, Molly of Belfast. You've got yours, Julia, Iris, Janice, Kerry, Betty. Uh, don't forget, we've still got number stamps too and the new blanks. So don't go anywhere, my lovers. I'm nearly there. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> we have your tea tonight, my love. I've no well, idea. Tea or dinner to you? I usually eat at lunchtime my main meal. Do you? Yeah, just years of habit. What do you call it? Breakfast, lunch, dinner? Dinner. 
Yeah, I call it dinner. Do you call as it well? dinner? Yeah. A lot of people say tea, though, don't they? Or what do they say? They don't. They Supper? tea. Tea. They call it up north. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They call it tea yeah, when it's dinner. It's dinner. Yeah. yeah. It confuses me that, but it comes from uh, afternoon tea. Because that's what I. Because you used to have cake and tea yeah. and sandwiches. Yeah. No, mine's dinner. Is is yeah. what I call it. So I've basically just added that on to one side and then trimmed off the wire and then I just repeated it on the other side, I've already done it, um, and then finished off, trim the wire, obviously it'll take a bit more time to just tuck it in and attach that to the other side like so. And that was it. So, you know, you might decide that you, d you don't really want extra copper, you don't want to show the wire, so you could put that on beading thread and you could just string it on as you usually would. That's completely up to you. I just thought it gave it a bit more of so that sort of Roman feel, you know, when you're adding a bit of extra wire. Now, these copper blanks, someone's asking, do they keep their colour? But they're pure copper, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're pure copper, there's nothing to rub off. Yeah. Um, they're actually great. It, there's nothing different about this than, than, than the copper sheet that you get. It's yeah. just they've been ready cut for you. So um, so they, they'll never go funny colours or no. tarnish. I mean, copper the... does tarnish. Um, raw copper tarnishes over time. Um, it In a nice way, it, it goes, ages. It ages, it goes dull. All you need to do is give it a polish and it brings it up again. Yeah. So um, that's just from surface things and the from, oxid, the air and that's things. That's from the air. That's from. Uh, but like I always t tell anybody, um, you know, when you wear jewelry with metal in it, don't spray your perfume all over it. Don't you know? Put anything that you're going to put on your skin on first before you put your jewelry on. But copper is very easy to bring up, as is silver. You just polish it. Um, it any any metal will go dull on, on any. But this will not change colour because it's copper. There's no. It's not copper coated. It's mm, copper. It's this real is, copper. This is the real copper. deal. This is the real thing. Um, so yeah, there it is. That was easy. It's easy. Um, it's fiddly. It takes a while to make those holes, which is why I pre-did them, because we'd still be here and I'd be making holes and you'd be going. <laughs> but as long as you get the holes in the right place, um, you get this lovely effect. And you know, you might just want to do a chain of three or, mm. or one and one below. You might want to stamp your name on it. This was just a slightly different way of doing it. Um, but it just makes you think outside the box as far as stamping blanks go. You don't have to just stamp on them. They can be a feature of your design. Love it, but you must check out your baskets. Uh, very, very popular in 1995. Thank you so much to Debbie. Now we have got mm -hmm. blankety blanks. <laughs> blankety blanks. Blankety blanks. Check for gun pens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Terry Wogan. Oh, are yeah. they the dragonflies? Oh, I love those. Oh, tell me about them then, because you've used them. You know why I like them? Because you can make them into angels if you want. How? Well, I haven't got my saw. Oh, hang on. Could this be, is this a head and a body? Yeah, I could, I could with my, if I get my very sharp um, cutters out, I don't know if I've got them. What you can do with these is, if you're good with your saw, if you've got your saw for perspex. I want to make angels. Saw or cut with your strong cutters. What about my snips, my tin snips? Or tin snips, snips are huh? perfect. Um, take it sort of halfway up for legs and then just take that, that in just slightly and then use, like I was showing you earlier, your round nose pliers to start to form the wings. Oh my gosh, they're angels. And then the legs. You need to take oh. the legs and take um, the legs apart and make feet. <gasps> and then you could um, stamp a name on as oh, well. No, what about if I got the enamel? I could enamel um, sort of legs and that on, couldn't I? You could can. All my alcohol inks. Alcohol pen. inks. I made um, flowers out of the, out of these ones with alcohol inks, and I just sawed the shape. So yeah, you can make you can make him into a three-dimensional dragonfly or an angel if you play with him a bit. Al always think about the way you can change the shape. Also, these are fantastic for stamping. I'm going to turn it sideways because look how much room you've got for stamping on there. I if love you take these. it sideways. I love them. So if you've got a really long name, again, they're perfect for that. Now you get ten of each, I'm guessing, is that right? Ten of each? Ten of each and they are 30 millimetres. Yep, yeah, that's right, you get ten of each. 30 millimetres on uh, the dragonflies and you get ten of the stars. Yeah, it is ten of each, I can see it on my thing. Yeah, and I can count. <laughs> what of each, sorry? Yes, it is. Yes. No, you're right, he said. 
They've always got to show their look, these men, haven't they? Oh, no, you are right after all. Now, uh, WDD C95, easy to stamp on. Mm, they're very good, these. They're nice and soft. Um, what if I don't stamp? What else can I do with them? Hammer them, make a hole in them, make them into a pendant, put alcohol links on them, use permanent markers and, and, and make colour, um, make it into a charm, just hang it off of a charm bracelet, um, hang it on a bit of leather thong and just have, you know, you don't have to write, you don't have to stamp on On your leather things. thong? You know, people always laugh at me when I say, I call that leather cord leather thong and every time I say it, everyone starts leather laughing. Leather thongs, that would chafe. <laughs> Leather cord, I mean. I would say leather thong. Leather I think thongs. <laughs> I don't wear leather thongs. Oh, can you imagine? No, <laughs> I'm clenching. I'm clenching right now. The thought of that. Leather cord, I mean. It's Debbie language. Oh, I know what I mean. I'm clenching. <laughs> no. You've got. This should be priced at twelve eighty five. There's twenty of these. It's great value already. And, and just think, if you're not going to use these for stamping, what about? Craft things are going to be fantastic. Yeah, they'd be lovely, wouldn't they? WDG C95. There are so many of you on the phone lines. Back by popular demand, there are only 7.95 for 20. That's very What's good. What's that? If it was 10, it'd be 70, 80p each. So they're 40p each. That's silly. Oh, I did that math myself, so I'm not sure whether it's right. I think they're 40 pence each. <gasps> Incredible! You have to have these. I was right. I'm never right with maths, but I was according to calculations. <laughs> WDG C95. Oh, there you are. All my gorgeous jewellery makers, Pat in Menorca, woken up from another siesta. <laughs> have a look at it. We've got all. Oh, we got the number stamps to do as well, so we're going to okay. get stampy on these. Okay. okay. Can we do two lucky stars for my? We can. Or three even. Or four. I don't know. <laughs> no. Or ten. Or ten. We're doing lucky stars for Mia and Chloe who are okay, out me. riding their, competing their ponies. Just go out of the shop to grab my mask and tape. I wonder what their lucky numbers are. Should we make it up? I think... These are good for dates and for <gasps> birthdays and oh, anniversaries. Yes, they are. And, and they're nice and good nice size as well. You can see what... I know I'm always going on about this, but I don't see the point of stamps if you can't read what you've stamped. And you can with these. They're great. And you look at all these. You get, like, the pound sign. Oh, the exclamation mark. Oh, I love them. Oh, sorry, you can't see them. I'm <laughs> being selfish Getting with too them. excited. Oh, my gosh, you do. They've only been on once before and they sold out because it was with me. Now, it was, wasn't it? Was it that time? FBG, you need to get these quick. It's the numbers. And uh, and these, again, are in the penguin and they come in the special zipper bag. Yeah, right, do. what should we do? What do you want me to stamp? Let's stamp. We're doing a date. We can do. Do we have a dot? We do have a dot. We have a dot. That's quite important. Because you can do dates. And speech between. marks and all these things that if you stamp a lot are really handy. And you've also got like plus and and so you could put and you know you could do little quirky because people that's what people usually want stamped on things is little sayings um, and little personal things that y you can't get. I think we'll do the number 29 if it's all right with 29? you. 29? Yeah. Are they little? We could do a, a birth date, or we could do just one number. What would you rather do? Should we do 29? Because then you can yeah. see how it would look like if it was yes. somebody's age. OK, so I've done exactly the same as I did earlier. I've just put my masking tape to keep my stamp down and to sort of have a, a line. Now, because I've got two, just two um, numbers, there isn't a middle, a middle um, letter or number to use. So I just sort of roughly take my midpoint. Again, if you want to be really precise, get your ruler out by all means, and then just go slightly to the left of the centre point. Let's just move that one out of the way. So, two. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I like that <laughs> number two. Oh, it's come out beautiful. Yeah, you can have a look in a minute. Is that a six or a nine you're wanting, or don't you mind? Nine, please. Nine. It's Mia's lucky number, 29. There we go. And nine. Ta-da! Oh, I love it. Can we show it we can to show Peter? It. I'm going to show it. Look at that. that. I love it. Yep. It. Oh, just the angle. Yep. Tip it forward a bit. Forward a bit. Forward. For there we there are it then. Is. I love it. Yeah, and do you know what I quite like about these numbers is they're swirly, but you can still read them. Really pretty, yes. aren't they? I really like the number 29. It's visually nice. <laughs> it does look nice. It's all swirly. That was my first number of house that I lived in as well. 29? Yeah. And the day I had my daughter. Oh, that's 29. your lucky number then. I think it's my lucky oh. number. I think but it you is. That, I'm then. so excited. 
We found JJ's lucky number. Oh, 29. Yeah. And it's quite good for doing like um, 21st, like if you're going to do a card or if you were going to um, make a ha I don't know, you could do loads of things. Dates, like babies are born, ba date, yeah. married, yeah. the day you get married. Yeah, ages, um, anything. It. Let's try out the question marks and things like oh, that, that, shall we? Look, that's nice. Yeah, and the pound. We like to, we could make some lucky, uh, lucky Well, if you were really signs. wanted to be very um, high end, you could do your, um, <gasps> your prices. Yes, <laughs> I imagine. love that, you could do your prices. Let's see how that goes down. That would be very posh. You'd have to take it off and you'd have to have one set price tag for lots of things so you could just <laughs> do it and use it again and again. Oh, oh no. I've, I've looked at that. Have you been able to line that up? I've, what I've done is because I'm not leaning forward because I don't want to get my head in the camera, I haven't. Um, there you go. Yeah, I don't know what I've done till I lean forward. Oh, little hands. <laughs> it's I an hand. Like what else have we got? Oh, no, we've done that. Let's do. Should we do the pan? They're quite good or for texture. You could do loads of those just for texture. Oh yeah, money, 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 money. Are we going to do a pound? Yeah. How does that go down? I can't see. There we are. Right. So let's do them on the top. Oh, that's good. Should I hold? Should I pick? Them oh up? yeah, I like that pound sign. That looks good. I'll leave the masking tape on. Maybe we won't get so much reflection. So tilt it forward. That's it. Then it gets the light proper. Oh, that pound sign looks amazing. <laughs> That's really nice. Oh, They're I a like good that. size, aren't yeah. they? They're yes, a really they are. good size. Now, can we try stamping on the dragonfly? Someone's asking. Yep. What should we stamp on there? Uh, should we just do, do the number four? This is like Sesame Street. <laughs> Today. I love Sesame Street. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you remember that song? <laughs> it's brought to you by the number four. Today's episode of Sesame Street was brought to you by the number four Ooh, and the letter P. And the count. Do you know what I do? You know what I'm doing? When I don't know how it goes down, I press it gently and then I can see how it goes down. Oh, so you know which way <laughs> you can it do it goes on paper. Up. And oh, it'll yeah. work on there too. Can you, if, would it be a good idea to stamp, to write in a permanent marker the way it goes up on yeah. the end? Yeah. You could just, um, I don't know, put a little um, dot or something. So oh, that on you, that so end. You know. Yeah, that's a good or idea, you can isn't do it? On paper. But, you know, equally, if you do it the wrong way around, it, you know, if you're not sure, what I always do is I have like, um, one of my blanks that is my scrap blank. So if I'm not sure, I would just put my scrap blank on there before I use the one that I was the important one. Put it down. That's correct. I'm good to go. And then I'll do it on my. And if you keep that, it can come out time and time again. And you can just stamp once on your piece of scrap. And then you're not going to be making a mistake on your actual angel. I love the scroll of it. It's these. very nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really nice. And you can read it, which um, which is good because it doesn't matter if it looks pretty, but if you're giving it to someone, you want them to be able to read what you've written yes. or what you, don't you? Absolutely. And these are really easy to stamp into, um, these these silver ones. They're really um, soft, nice and soft. But these make eyes. The yeah, you could cool do stops. eyes. You could do an um, underline with it, couldn't you? Oh yes, or dot 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 dot. And I like to be the continued. Yes, dot, 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 you could dot. do that. You could do um, exclamation mark. Do you want to try good. the exclamation yeah. on there as well? Let's try him. Let's try her. Is that an exclamation mark? What's exclamation. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It's my eyes. Unless I got mixed up, which is oh, highly quite probable. possibly. Let me. We won't know until we do it. Yes, the exclamation mark. Hmm. So as as well as. Um, Love it. Doing it as, as what it's supposed to be. You can also do it as texture. You could do lines with it. You could um, texture your metal using your stamps. I do that loads. I'll just get sort of a, a symbol and just put it all over my stamp to make it and then add, add a bit of mark or a bit of alcohol ink. Um, and you've added sort of texture to your metal. Um, you can write, you can add your birthdays, but you can think outside the box with it as well. I love stamping. I think it's, it's so fun. personal. I could go on and make you do a million things right now. <laughs> and I love Lucky Charms, so you know. Uh, I, I, it's this, I just think you can make something sentimental yeah. that's lucky. I got my lucky number 29. Oh, I got it upside down. Yeah, that's better. I love that. I love it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my number twenty nine. I think that's my lucky number, Debbie Kershaw. Lucky number, just now it. we're really close to sell out on these six pounds and ninety five pence. It's incredible. You even get now all you need now is a hammer. That's it. You're ready to go, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Yep, hammer so and block. easy, so easy at six ninety five. Such an incredible price. FBGX thirteen is your item code. Thanks so much. You're Thank you welcome. so much. You're amazing. I'm taking this number twenty nine, and uh, we are going to go back over to the centre. Have a few of them to play with if you want. Thank you. And we're going to go back over because I've got some gorgeous gemstones to give to you. Uh, ben is ready. He's always ready. He's born ready. <laughs> We're going over. He's ready. He's always ready, that one. But Mike's not ready. Mike's never ready. Now, I'm going to give to you... Can I, do, can I do number 11? And then can I also do number 9? Because I love those cogs. Look at these gorgeous rounds. I love the iridescence of this. Red or pink? Red or pink? It's one of those. Red or pink? Mm. Like a South Sea red, isn't it? Do you think? Like yeah, a South lovely. Sea pearl red? Yeah. Love these. We've only got a few of these left. DBR, U35. Beautiful Kale Sebney, 145 carats, and they are 10 millimetres on an 18 centimetre strand. I love this colour and I love the depth of that. I think it look really nice with a deep purple or a gold or something like that. Earrings. I love the idea of earrings with this strand. We're going to give you your strand for an incredible price tag. Should be $9.95. Now, Cal said it can be a lot more expensive than agates and things like that. It's harder for us to get a hold of, and we do pay a larger price tag for it. It's got a richness to it, Cal Sedney, but also this sort of waxy luster that I just love. Think about your blue Cal Sedney and, and the sort of glow that it's got. It's said to stimulate creativity, is Cal Sedney. $9.95 is not your price tag today. What about a gold Shambhala style bracelet with gold wire with this? Look gorgeous, wouldn't it? Really rich. These can be quite Bollywood as well. What about this with a turquoise from earlier? Lush. That's not the right price tag now. $7.95 is the right price tag. You've got the extended money back guarantee from now until the 31st of January 2015. Who thought they'd live to see 2015? Mm. Crazy, isn't it? I always find it incredible that my children have got 2,000 birthdays and that birthday, <laughs> not 19 birthdays. Don't you think that's fun? Uh, Seven thousand eighty. She thinks I was born in 1980. It's like, whoa, you were born in 1980. Like someone saying to you, I was born in 1810. <laughs> you know, it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? 795 DBR U35. What it must be to have a 2000 birth date. You probably have, Benny. Were you born in? No, of course you haven't. Uh, 1992. I were raving in those days. The year of the illegal rave you were born. Mm. You know that? I was an illegal rave. You were an illegal <laughs> rave. <laughs> 7.95. We used to go down West... I won't tell you now. Western Superman in our hot pants. We did then. <laughs> dancing around fires. What was that all about? Hmm? At 7 pounds and 95 pence. Now, I would like to do the... These could be hedgehogs, moustaches or cogs. <laughs> I love them, yeah? Hedgehogs, moustaches or cogs. Hedgehogs, moustaches or cogs. Look, these are lush. Yeah, I was it nearly, nearly tripped up on my own words there. Now, you're going to love these, and they are very steampunk, but they remind me of hedgehogs, and that makes me smile and happy. Have a look. If you like something with texture, these agates are yours. Now, you've got a drill hole at the top. They're just so different. What, did you, what do you think they look like? You think it looks like the common spiny fish? I've never heard of a spine. Oh, stickleback, you mean. Now, yeah, because of the little mouthy bits. Now, I love these for steampunk pieces because they are very sort of gemstone cogs. Have you seen these? I've never seen those before. Are they brand new? No. Uh, oh, no, are these not the ones I did then? What did I do them in? I think it might have been amethyst. They're brand new. I love them because you've got the three different now but what are you going to do with them uh, now Gemma Crow I believe has got these I just think it's so good Debbie to have every possible shape and size oh, yeah. in a gemstone well you're never going to know what style you're going to necessarily want to create in advance and that sometimes you, you know you get inspiration from the gemstones themselves and then you come across something like this you think yeah that's exactly what I need for this design I've got in mind 
I love unusual things like this. I love that. So do I. I'm looking at these and I think, gosh, I've never seen anything like it. And they're made out of real gemstones and they've got great clarity, great colour. They're like an emerald green. I love green onyx anyway. It's very Victorian, mm. isn't it? I just think to have something. But what would you make? Would it be earrings? You've only got one drill hole. Would you mix this with wire? Would it be steampunky? Would it go in resin? What would you do with them? I think I'd use that as a pendant and then I think I'd possibly use some wire either wrapped round or you can make a nice coil and then you could sit it on top so that you know you've got layers so you can maybe have a gemstone and a wire coil and then that in the background that would look quite pretty. Can you imagine how hard it is to cut these mm -hmm. as well? I mean that's that's some lapidary there. That's clever. Yeah. And you've got a lovely smoothness to the top here and this incredible spikiness here. I think this would be quite cool on a piece of leather cord like that, you know, a bit masculine, but also mixed up with feathers. And I, all, I absolutely think hat pins. Yeah. A lot of tweed coming out now with mm. pheasant feathers and things like that. You know, I do think these would make incredibly quirky hat pins. Put them with your cogs, your um, Tim Holtz cogs and things like that as well. Keep that theme running, very steampunky. Uh, now these are brand new. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're so different. And they're coming to you. For just £9.95, that's just £3.32 each. I think it's phenomenal to have something so different. Let me know what you've done with yours. If you've got the amethyst. Sorry, I dropped it, but didn't it make a great sound when it clinked? Ling a ling a ling. Have a look. I can see why you think they look a little bit like fishes, because if you look at the little mouth there and they're spiky like a hedgehog and you get three so you've got the varying size very popular very busy for these 0800 644 I love those now fluorite it's in number seven is what it is oh you're gonna like these now do you remember when I think it was Alison Terry it could have been Michelle that did it could have been Michelle actually no, it could have been awesome. Anyway, a prong set out of this shape, and it was perfect. Have a look. So you can see Alison Terry used, I'm pretty sure it's Alison Terry, the bottom of these as the Kool-Aid, and the face of these, that was at the top of the gemstones. And you have a look. Aren't these fab? I love the fact they're fluorite as well. Do you love these? Love these. What do you make out of these? Would you do the whole prong set ring thing? Do you see how well they sit? Or would it be a pendant? Do you know, it's one of those strands that would be my best strand that I'd go and just get out and then I'd, I'd find that perfect project. Aren't they lovely? They're faceted, but they're also quite organic. I can't describe it. They're lovely. They are faceted. They're trillant shape. I think they're gorgeous. They're really unusual, but they've still got that lovely natural look about them. I agree. Yeah, because look, that one there. And, but a clarity as well. Some of these have got a great clarity. Yeah. Some boast rich colour where they don't have the clarity. You know, I mean, this one we could actually almost think might be an aquamarine. You know, mm. you look at that and you think, is it an aquamarine? And I look, doesn't that look like an aquamarine? What about earrings with these dropping everywhere? Oh, I think these are beautiful. I think if you wanted to do something like a pendant but set three of them prong set loop at either end lovely bit of chain yeah. they'd be so different and because they've got that coulee they'd stand out from the skin wouldn't they vgr u75 is your item code you've got this is a got to have it strand look at the colors i love them oh eight hundred six triple four six double five on the phone lines is how you get these check out baskets only 11 pounds and 95 pence no that's what they were says liam liam is the producer 90 carats and they're graduated don't forget seven pounds and 95 pence is your brand new 7.95 you have to experiment with these when they're only 7.95 now these are great please please send something to the wall of fame to tell us what you've done with these you've got these gorgeous colors as well and they're soft these colors and they glow as we know in uv lights if you, if you didn't know that well, it's not an extra in it uh, the fluorite glows in uv light and it's got the most look at that color Mwah! vgr u 75 90 carats in total seven to 11 millimeters oh i love them i love them at 7.95 you'll love them too loads of you there susan's got two jane elise sweeter 
uh, Maxine, Marion, Maggie, Lynn, I've got Julie, Leanne, I've got Susan in County Cork. Where the Clearies come from. <laughs> well, my Clearies, telling you that earlier, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. We're from, we're from Cork. Uh, 7.95 is... Oh, bless Mark Smith. He's coming up for you. Pudding is arriving soon. We're calling him Pudding. <laughs> we are the main course. <laughs> what did you have for your lunch today, Ben? Uh, I didn't have anything. Yet. I knew you hadn't eaten lunch. That's why I asked you. No, I didn't. Could you tell? Mothers can tell when boys are eating their lunch. <laughs> I can tell when you haven't eaten. If you could just eat some lunch, please. Okay. What are you eating for your dinner tonight? Is Jodie feeding me? Is what I want to know. No, I'm going to have to go to a fast food restaurant. <gasps> as long as you're We're eating. One of those gigs. So. Oh, one of those pesky gigs. Yeah. Now. Have a look at this chain. Now, I'm thinking I want to push some polymer clay, I want to push some resin, I want to put, I want to put, use these to make, I also, why am I thinking of Star Trek when I'm looking at these? <laughs> Are you? It's like their little badgy thing, isn't it, that they have? But I would push these into my moulding compound as well, would you? Yeah, because then you could keep reusing the shape. That'd be nice if you separated a link. You could use like one link as a pendant, as earrings. Now this is also ring size, just in case. Only ever been in a bundle before. Now, I actually think, you know I was saying to you earlier about pushing things into candles? It's be gorgeous pushed into a candle. It would. I am obsessed with candles at the moment. That, that much is true. Now, what do I get? Half a metre. Half a metre of it. And it's gold, copper and gold. And you get these large jump rings. They're sold as closed. But what I might be inclined to do is make, make a feature out of this. Maybe just a part of it in a necklace. Maybe sew in and out some gemstones. Mm. Maybe utilise these little spaces and fill them up with CD beads would be nice. And there's something in the centre here. Mm. Maybe make a brooch out <coughs> of yeah, it. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Frame something. Use it as a frame. Maybe if you've got some resin and you've put some resin over the top of a photograph, like a locket. Yeah, that would you be could good. use this over the top. BKAZ40 is your item code. 0800644655 is the number to be dialed in. All yours. Half a meter for just ten pounds and ninety-five pence. Now you've got lots of framing here. You've got you are gonna take that price tag down. 9.95 we give you an extra pound we give you give you an extra pound off uh, 0800 6 double five bka z40 is your item code what are the other options that we can do with this deb's well you could buy a couple of them and make a really nice belt couldn't you oh or a handbag a strap you could attach it to your handbag that would be yes. gorgeous i think you can snazz up an outfit by making your own belts mm -hmm. You could just put it half the way across. Actually, that's quite Chanel, darling. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. You wouldn't pay as much as you would if it were the aforementioned designer. 9.95, brilliant price. I've not seen this before either. But then I've been away and things change when you're away. Pat and Menorca, Sylvia, Sheila's got two, Elise, Carol in Countdown, BKA Z40. Amazing having you come here today. I've got, let's do, let's do these round out, round out. Aquamarine. I haven't seen aquamarine for a bit. Hundred percent natural. Now, for me, this is like an ocean scene. Look at those colours. I can almost hear the waves crashing. And they do associate this gemstone with the sea. Men would carry carry it in their pockets, uh, like a St Christopher, but for going across seas. Really? Yeah, to protect them. They would offer it to this god of the sea. Is it Neptune, the god of the sea god? Mm. Depending on what you believed. Always mamadial to me. And do you know this is a gemstone of lovers as well? It's said to reignite the flames of love and bind a marriage. Uh, so, uh, oh, and it was the original gemstone put into engagement rings before De Beers did that big diamond campaign. You've got aquamarine, March's birth gemstone, and, and these rondelles are so beautiful. And we don't get many colours like this earrings, charms, bracelets, necklaces. You've got so many options, so many. Z, why are you 46? All yours for a should be price tag of fourteen ninety five. But I said should be, 
not is. I'm going to give you the reduced price tag of and, bah. Nine, nine, when I went bah, it changed. Nine pounds and 95 pence, incredible value. Make sure you are checking out Lisa Jane Deborah in Leicestershire. Uh, you have got yours. Jay, Lisa's just joined us, well done to you. Five by four to 11 by seven on a 21 centimeter strand. Now, when are you back, Deborah, Kishore? There's the question. I am back this month. I think it's 20 something. The 20 something. It's for a morning show um, towards the end of the month. So it could be the 23rd is in my head, but I could be wrong. Okay, well, look out for that. There could be dates. There could the be dates. 23rd, 26th, around the end of the month. Now, I'm with who tomorrow? Gemma Crow tomorrow and the designer inspiration. Well, they don't normally let me in Gemma in the same classroom. <laughs> Well, it goes quick, goes over Gloucestershire, they say. Can, can we, we're, we're naughty together, we are. We get sent out the room. Yeah. Well, she's from the Shire, isn't she? Uh, me and Gemma Crow tomorrow on Designer Inspiration. Be there, be there. I wonder what she's up to. I'll give her a tinkle tonight. Have you got any gossip about what Gemma Crow might be up to? Is she doing metal sheet, did I see? Is she? You're right, you're Am so right? right all the time. I'm going to tell that to your husband. You, she is right all <laughs> the time, Mr. Kershaw, despite what you think. Uh, now, it's been amazing having Debbie's company. We have got Ed coming up with dessert Mark Smith. He's like the eaten mess of puddings, I guess. Mm -hmm. If he was a pudding, he'd be more refined than an eaten yeah, mess of pudding. Yeah. What do you think he would be? He'd be a posh pudding. Tiramisulata. Tiram yeah. Tiram no, no, because that's not pudding. That's Tiramisu. a dip, a fishy dip. Cheese and biscuits, he'd be. He'd be, yes, he would be. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> no, oh, he? He's coming. The cheese and biscuit man. I wish he was cheese and biscuits. Oh, I love that. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. I love you lots and we missed you. Thanks, the gorgeous Lady KK. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. It was here almost 650 years ago in Amir where King Jai Singh first laid the foundations that was to become one of the world's most famous walled cities, Jaipur. The city of Jaipur, commonly known as the Pink City, is now taking centre stage for gemstone cutting and trading. It's here in the bursting heart of the walled city that our gems of distinction strands are cut, faceted and polished. So, how do you get a pile of tourmaline that looks like this into a gorgeous strand that looks like this? So when you've got a pile of tourmaline like this, it's going to be made into gemstone beads. First of all, each one of these gemstones need to be inspected. A line is then drawn down the middle of the gem zone or wherever the gem is going to be faceted and it's then taken behind us and then faceted into these rough gem shapes. Once each gemstone has been cut into the amount of pieces it needs to be, it's then time to shape the gemstones. These gentlemen are working on anything from a round to a pear shape, pretty much any cut imaginable. The next process is polishing and faceting, and this takes a huge amount of skill. It can take years for a lapidus to be able to facet like this, and each one of the gemstones can take up to 10 minutes to cut. A really lengthy but incredible process. The next stage of the process is really interesting. This is where each one of the gemstones is drilled. And what Sanjay's doing here is putting a drill through faceted beads of black tourmaline. The next stage after drilling is then to get the gemstone sorted.